All right, here we go, guys. The players are now on the stage. Briefly, we'll flash our names into the bottom corner there. We have uh, you know, three different languages going on. We've got English, Chinese, and Korean, of course, all live from Paradise City Resort and Hotel That's here right. in Incheon, South Korea. Yeah, we've got the uh, Chinese commentators just over to our left, the Koreans on the other side of the stage. So having them all here live and local, it's pretty awesome uh, to, to have that happen. It's uh, not always the norm in esports to have yep. multi-language streams actually on site. So really cool to see. Uh, but yeah, we've got our first match about to start, and I'm very excited to see how these teams perform. Um, I talked about the, the multinational roster that Guangzhou is. Didn't mention Eileen, who's perhaps the most exciting of the oh, two yeah. Chinese players on the roster. Insane DPS, very, very uh, impactful player. You're, you're going to see when we do see Dive come out in this meta, eventually it's going to, uh, you know, we will see some Genji sneak in. Um, it depends on what the map pool is going to be for Overwatch League, etc. But... Uh, you know, when Genji does get in there, that's what you got to watch out for for this guy. Yeah, and maybe we'll get to see a little bit of that today, because in case you guys missed the news, this is, in fact, going to be played on the live patch. So the Doomfist, Doomfist and Brigida nerfs are through. Ash is going to be playable. So we could see some crazy stuff. It's a show match. Maybe these guys want to have a little bit more fun. I, I'm sure that some of them want to take it very seriously, especially yeah. Soul here in front of the home crowd. They want to be able to get that win. But we might get some mild insanity when it comes down to some of the plays and some of the picks that could be coming through. For sure. Uh, I mean, Eileen's Doomfist, something else we could, you know, potentially see. Obviously, you never know. With the nerfs, it's, uh, it's hard to say. But, I mean, some, one of his stronger heroes for Soul Dynasty, I think tonight is all about redemption to start this new story off with a bang. And yeah. that's the entire narrative that was posted in, in, in what they said on the interview there, what they said in their their interviews, the videos, is this is a new Soul Dynasty. This is not the weak Soul Dynasty we had in season one. This is gonna be a completely new era for this Soul Squad. So for them, uh, I think to win this tonight, even especially if they could take it with a 4-0, sets that precedent, sets a very strong message that they're coming in as a stronger team than they were just previously in Season 1. Yeah, and as, as for Charge, you know, saying that this is probably going to be a very tough match for us. We haven't been together as a full squad. It's the, a triple language uh, team that we have team, going you know? on. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of... Uh, work that has to go into making sure that the communication is going to be thoroughly fleshed out, but these, this team can operate at the highest level. I think for them, it's going to be a little bit more of a laid-back experience. For Soul Dynasty, at that point, it's a matter of not getting inside your own head of we have to win, we have to win so hard that you actually kind of throw the game, and yeah. then suddenly you start things off on the wrong foot. I don't think that's going to be the case here, but still, uh, a lot of pressure on both these squads, because they do want to, at the end of the day, they do want to look good. No one wants to walk away from this saying, like, oh, man, that was, yeah, that was How a are we going to handle yeah. 28 matches after this, you know? Uh, oh, boy, strap in, boys. It's time to practice. This will also be the first time we have uh, a non-Shanghai Dragons Chinese team playing in, in kind of an yeah. official match. This is not an Overwatch League match that's officially preseason or have any effect on the standings, yeah. by the way. This is just purely a show match. But it is about that pride. It is about winning. Um, but for Guangzhou, I think for a lot of these players, it's about, you know, the Chinese pride as well. Um, even though the majority of the players on the roster are not Chinese, you want to represent your city well. Yeah, and we should go ahead and mention that actually the other Chinese player that's not Eileen, which of course is going to be only which is not here today. That's right. He could not make it to Korea. Uh, just some ex external circumstances uh, kind of came through, so he couldn't make the trip over, unfortunately. So it will be Eileen solely representing China here, but the rest of the roster is here to play, and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of rotations uh, on that playing roster as we go map to map. Four maps planned out. All of the maps uh, picks have been locked yeah. in. So we're starting off with Lijiang Tower, then into Hollywood, then Hanamura, and Route 66. That's right. So kind of the bread and butter of Korean contenders, I suppose. Those are the maps that we see the most of uh, for us. So going to be very... Uh, familiar with those, but unfortunately he could not be here. But yeah. the rest of the team, the rest of the team is there, and of course all of the Soul Dynasty players are ready to go. Yeah, so those maps are all locked and set. We are just going to play the four maps, no matter what the score is, no tiebreaker. So this that match we've been could told end of. in a yeah. In this match, it could end in a draw uh, because last I heard, we would not be playing a fifth map if it is two-two. Things could change, but um, you know that's kind of the put the, to put the format out there for you guys. So it's not loser picks. It's not an open map pool. Live patch, four map series, those locked maps that Achilles just mentioned. Yeah. 
Um, I'm not going to read them out again, but you know, we'll talk about them as they go <laughs> one by one. So Achilles and I are kind of winging it today in terms of this production. Uh, we did a very short rehearsal here, so. Yeah, you know, we had to make time, of course, for Epic High to get in there and have their moment on stage to get their rehearsal done, so we kind of took a backseat, but it's okay. Uh, we're very used to doing things with minimal communication, with minimal rehearsals, so this is very standard for us, I suppose. So we're just diving in. We're going to have a we're gonna have a good time, you know, when we get in the game. Of course, we'll throw over to that. Otherwise, we're just going to sit here and kind of, you know, talk about the teams, talk about whatever comes in our minds. Yeah. So I'm, I'm most excited for Jexe to be on Soul Dynasty, personally. Absolutely. Uh, incredible Lucio player, and he's a great mercy as well. We know Toby's weakness has kind of always been that mercy there. It's a team that I think is really going to bring him up because he's a bit of a shy guy. He's a very emotional player. For those who remember watching the Contenders Finals, or not even Finals, Round of Eight, excuse me, I should yeah. say, where they were expected to go to the Finals. They lost in that first round of playoffs. Very emotional player. I think he's got a good support system here in the very experienced Soul Dynasty players, especially Jae Hong, uh, who's going to be the captain, right, and kind of keep him in line. I think he's going to come in as a very, very strong force in this meta, you know, assuming that we're leading into a little bit more 3-3-esque, three, three you know, tank-oriented, support-oriented metas um, going into the beginning of Overwatch League. I think that this is the right team for him, so I'm really excited to see his future career now moving into Overwatch League, into the big league. Yeah, well, and then, of course, if, in case things kind of swing back over to Mercy as well when it comes down to the support meta, he is going to be a very strong factor for Soul Dynasty where it, it was a little bit, you know, of a struggle for them when Mercy was very prevalent in the support line. But here we go. We'll take a look at the starting line up for Guangzhou Charge. It's going to be Rio, Hotba, Eileen, Shu, Chara, and Happy. Yep, so we do get to see Eileen right off the bat. Happy as well, someone you and I haven't commentated in a while. He and Chara, of course, hailing from Metabellum and played in Contenders Korea. Hotba, someone we saw a long, long time ago in the Apex days. It was on LW Red before moving into Philadelphia Fusion, of course. Rio as well, having that history in Afrika Freaks Red and, of course, Metabellum. So, you know, this is a roster of very familiar players to the Korean scene. The only one we didn't mention here on this starting lineup, I guess, is Shu, who is formerly Flashlux, actually, originally. Yeah, so. way back in the day. Flashlux then into Meta Athena briefly, and then Toronto, Toronto Esports. Yeah. So another player who has played abroad, uh, so you would expect that he is kind of going to be a very good bridge between the other players as far as, you know, English to uh, whichever other language they need to really uh, you know, go through. So. Shu will be playing. I can promise you guys, I know a lot of you in chat are probably being like, oh my god, where's Nero? Where's Kib? They're not letting them play. But everyone will probably have their moment here today. They didn't bring the players all the way to Korea just to not have them perform. We're just giving away in the crowd. That's going to be uh, Tasha and Doremi of the Spiral Cats, a Korean-based cosplay group. So here to show their support for the Seoul Dynasty. Yep. Speaking of Seoul Dynasty, I think we're going to take a look at their starting lineup here. As you can see, we will be starting the support duo of Jexe and Ryu Jae Hong. With the DPS duo there on the end, Fleta and Munchkin with Zumba and Marvel on the start here. So with this lineup of Zumba plus Marvel rather than Michelle, it does look like we're going to see Zumba on the D.Va for now. Marvel will probably be ending up playing, you know, the Reinhardt there, assuming we're going to see more 3-3 oriented play. And we'll have Munchkin and Fleta divvying up the DPS, AKA the Brigida there and the Zarya. This is what you would expect to see in the Korean approach to this meta. But I'd, I'd still love to see Zumba on the Zarya. Maybe we see a flex here and it's Munchkin on the D.Va. Pretty unlikely given their histories, but you know, well, you can always see Michelle subbed in later on because he's going to be the, the diva you want to bring in if you want to run that duo. Yeah, very much so. We'll see if we're able to get that later on, what these guys are going to do to mix up the squads. I mean, but this is a very good moment, uh, a very good time here with this show match to kind of go in, try different variations of the roster, you know, put the puzzle together in different ways and see which one is actually the, the one that gives you the perfect picture. And we know Soul Dynasty, I mean, they are no stranger to that. I mean, throughout the entirety of season one, we saw all sorts of roster swap rounds. We saw, you know, Guido playing support for the majority of the season, even though he has a DPS background. We saw Jae Hong play the Winston. Anything can happen. Here is going to be our starting map, Lee Zhang Tower here for game one. Yep, seems like we're just about ready to dive in. So Lee Zhang Tower, three rounds. We'll see if we can go the distance on that or, or if it's going to be a 2-0 for either of these squads. Then we'll progress through hybrid, then assault, then escort the format that you guys are very much used to. Very true. The leader of this series is going to have that extra momentum, but there won't be any sort of map advantage to the loser since yep. they are all locked maps here. 
pretty even though across the board these teams knew exactly what maps were going to be played well in advance so they could have some unique prepared strategies for these maps coming in now that we are on the Doomfist and Brigida nerf patch. But well, here we go, guys. Seems like we are ready to kick things off. Let's go ahead and jump in for map number one. It's Lijong Tower. There we go. It's time. As expected, Zumba on the Zarya with the Munchkin playing the. Uh, sorry, Zumba on the Devo with Munchkin playing the Zarya, excuse me. I'm not going to lie, I was waiting for the fan cheer to come out. <laughs> That's why I didn't immediately start talking, but then the Koreans came in. I'm like, oh, wait, yeah, this isn't contenders anymore. Nope. Well, here we go. Will just be control center to kick things off so far from Guangzhou Charge. Well, show charge rather, and Soul Dynasty will just be that standard 3-3. Goats Comp coming through, going in for a pin. Marvel going in way too deep. Will be the first one picked off. Hotba coming up with the first kill of the show match. Now charging for the they were going to be looking for a little bit more clean up the kill there on the Munchkin, pushing them all the way back towards spawn as Jae Hong falls, and that is going to be a one fight and a cap coming through for Guangzhou. Yeah, I know everyone wanted to see Eileen on the dive on the more DPS oriented heroes and not the Brigida, but he ends up winning this fight for them, doing a ton of extra healing, 20% ult charge lead here over Flata, and helping to set up for that initial pick that leads to Guangzhou Charge's first cap here. Yep, just holding him here right at the entryway. Shadow going to be coming down. Rio not able to find too much on the back of that, but it doesn't really matter because all of Soul Dynasty is trying to retreat, and only a few are going to be lucky enough to do so. Fleta and Jay Hong going down on the back and slowly trying to build up those ultimates to try to break three of this choke point. But Marvel, I mean, he's about to get lapped in ult charge by yeah. Rio. 16% to the 37 that Marvel's Rio. been able to accrue. Rio, Shatter wasn't massive, but they still control this choke point here. So Soul Dynasty is going to have to boost in. And they're taking so much damage on the approach. Yep, right there in the front yet again. It's going to be Marvel going down. Jexay dead as well as Eileen comes up with a double kill. Pop out in on Azumba's mech. And it is an absolute slaughter. Finally get the late kill there on Azumba to complete the team kill. And this is just how this map works. You know, we talk about this in Contenders Korea all the time in the 3-3 meta. When you're on this battleground in particular, when you fight around this choke, it's so difficult for the attacking team. The defending team is going to do so much damage on the approach. They're always going to have that concave. Now they've got this grab they're sitting on here. Far back is happy to hide the angle. Yep, escorting themselves forward here with that Transcendence Jexa trying to build up for the sound barrier. Shu going to be matching with one of his own so far. No one going to be going down. Rio taking a couple hits here. Shatter online for Marvel, tries to drop the hammer, throws it straight into the shield. Rio nearly went online, now 3% away from a Shatter of his own. Can he shut down this push from the Soul Dynasty as they try to make their way over onto the point? Munchkin going to be burning up. Energy high. They manage to find Rio. Right as he comes online, Chara a bit too late with the sound barrier. Cannot keep him in the fight. Self-destruct out, not going to find anything, but Zuma makes it back into the mech safely. Munchkin looking for the finish there. They get the corner on his shoe. They take him down. They make their way on to the point. They will be able to get the cap. And when, fantastic hold from Guangzhou, but they cannot take it to 99, only 87. And when you look at the start of that fight, it's part of this is one, despite the good positioning there of Happy to try to get that long distance grab, the hidden angle there, it's still eaten by Zumbo, who comes up on this diva, eats the grab, and sets up that push. Now they're going to have the tables turned here. They've got this choke controlled. Rio coming forward, threatening the shatter, slams it down, manages to find two, but the transcendence is going to be in from Jae Hong. Pin not going to find anything either. Guangzhou on the reapproach, looking to take this one back. Marvel getting tagged up, going lower and lower. Can they finish him off? The Discord will help do it. Chara comes up with a kill. Graviton Surge locking up the members of Guangzhou, but can they find the damage? Soul Dynasty trying to answer back, trying to break Hotba out of that mech, but they are unable to do so. They finally managed to find one of the main tanks here in the front line as Rio will get dropped. Dynasty still in control of the point for now. Zumba going to get popped out of the mech. Hotba able to find Fleta with the self-destruct. Looking for a little bit more shoot. Going to get a lock down there on the Jexay as he goes skirting around the back side of the point. The flip's still not coming through. Will finally be found. Soul Dynasty only accruing 49% for themselves. They have to get right back in onto this point immediately, but I don't think it's going to happen. Doesn't look likely. So this is going to be the cleanup kills coming through. Very well played here by Guangzhou on the retake. Overtime ticking down here, and that should be about all she wrote. Jexay trying to stay alive. He is a master of it, but this time it's not going to work out. Bomb into the back, but no one can tag the point. Graviton Surge came through from Happy, locked them in. 
Yeah. Guangzhou Charge will be able to take the first round of Li Zhang. We have to remember the synergy, the pre-existing synergy between the Meta Bellum players on Guangzhou Charge, which is the majority of this starting lineup, is definitely there. You can feel the shatters that Rio is setting up are coming through by the speed boost coming out from Charge. Charge is setting these up getting him into the right angle, getting him behind the barriers of Marvel, getting him into these flanking spots where it's very difficult for Soul Dynasty to avoid the shatters coming through. And that's just what comes with experience working together, right? Happy Chara and Rio all have that pre-existing synergy from playing together, from communicating together, and it really shows here. Aliens had some great moments too on the Brigida, setting up these fights, setting up these shatters, but also just keeping everybody alive, maximizing damage, playing a little bit safer than Fleta in terms of that matchup. Jump into the back, Rio here over onto the Winston. Gonna be going up against Marvel's Ryan all the same. Boop off from Chara, manages to find Jay Hong. First kill gonna be coming through. A couple going off the side here. Now Fleta taking a dip as well. As Hotpa comes up with that, Zimba gonna be popped out. And it looks like Guangzhou has yet again netted themselves an initial cap here. Yeah, very nicely done. Point unlocks here. Rio building also 62% of ult charge. It's pretty rare in this meta to see a Winston get to build that much even in a one fight. This goes to show that he was able to maximize damage. The team supported him. He got that armor pack there from Eileen. So he's going to have our primal to contest. Rapper on the backhand side. He's going in. He's looking for Jay Hong. Can't take him low enough. Cannot get that kill. Rio going to be stunned up here onto the high ground. Getting lower and lower. Jumps back over to the point to keep himself alive. Meanwhile, Jay Hong has been picked off. Eileen again coming up with a double kill. As Marvel as well will get dropped. Jexa just going off the side, trying to get a reset in. Now, Rio doesn't quite build the Primal Rage, but he's going to have it very soon. It's just going to build up over time here. And Eileen has this armor, this rally he could toss out in just a second. So for Soul Dynasty, this next approach is going to be very difficult. They're going to need to get a big grab. But even then, Guangzhou's already got the Transcendence to answer. So this is, if they can flip it with this, it'll be a miracle. But it's what they need right now. Happy spamming away. Gets tagged up a little bit there on the approach. Munchen going to go down. Chara taking him off the side. Now the grab not going to be in the fight. Fleta does manage to pop that rally here. Shatter going to be coming down. Marvel as well, though. Dropped immediately after using the ult. Jae Hong able to answer one back. Finds the kill on Rio, But now he himself is gone. Hot butt just goes ahead. Steamrolls his way to a double kill. Shu cleans up Jexe. 61% here for the charge. Soul Dynasty, can they do anything to break this defense? I mean, they still hold the grav, but the trance is held as well. There's just not a lot of ways to approach this point without the Earth Shatter. And remember, that was an opening pick from Chara. He played risky, he played greedy to get that. He almost died for it. But those are opening picks that guarantee you're going to keep those ultimates. So, works out here. Risk well paid off. Pushing their way through. But can make sure he does not get moved off this time. The grab on Surge is going to be coming down. The self-destruct out from Hoppa. Looking for a pick. Not going to be able to find it. Zumba going to be dead. Bombs in, however. And it's going to be a triple kill. Happy Rio and Chara. All knocked out of the park. But they still need to get the flip. 95% Guangzhou charge. Still holding on. Training this one as much as they possibly can. Hotpot will finally get cleaned up as we enter into OT. Soul Dynasty, they get the flip, but can they maintain control? They have the Reinhardt on the point, which is going to be a favorable matchup against Rio on this Winston. It's tough for him to get in there and dive or even hurt anybody without using the Primal because they have that anchor there in the Rhine. They have the defensive charge set up as well. So this is going to be a tough approach here, but he's going to have to use the Primal. Rally out, Shatter coming down. Marvel not going to be able to find anything. Throws it straight into the Zarya bubble. Managed to stay alive. Rio coming in primal range, still popped. Smacking him around, trying to isolate the right heart. Maybe just knock him way out of the park here. That's gonna be Marvel sailing off the side of the map. Rio comes up with a kill. Now Soul Dynasty, they are struggling to hold on. Let it go and low. Graviton Surge does come through from Munchkin, locks him in. Jexa finds one, taking down Eileen. Transcend is now out from Chu. They get locked up. Jay Hong gonna be matching with a trance of his own. Zumba eliminated. Fleta just going to be swinging away like a bad man, Rally nearly coming back online to try to elongate this fight. Jay Hong comes up with the kill on the happy, the sound barrier in from Chara. Jexe going to be matching on the opposite side. They still have control for the moment. Rio could get picked off, shoot going low as they chase forward. Soul Dynasty, they manage to hold them back. Oh man, Munchkin holds on because he gets the high energy. He's the focus of Ryu Jae Hong's harm, Orb of Harmony. Fleta's getting the armor pack on, he pops the rally. That armor and all the healing keeps him alive. He does the massive amount of damage they need to sustain here. Rio builds another primal here, and he won that matchup against Marvel last time through that, but this time he's up against the Wrecking Ball. Not going to be so easy to retake with this approach, and they don't even have a grab online. So Soul looking very poised now to bring us to a 1-1. Okay, well, charging forward, looking for a poop bomb. Not going to be able to find it. Jay Hong going to be the first one picked. 
As Rio finds the kill, Primal Rage in, grabbing on Surge, out from Munchkin, locking him up. Marvel coming in with a pile driver, not gonna be able to find anything. Rio gets another one as Flutter goes down, but he himself goes sailing off the side of the map. Marvel trying to survive, spraying away, nearly takes down Shu. Rolling over to the side, now pushing for the minefield in such a position that it's not catching anybody. He'll roll back in, pops the adaptive shield, gets that pile driver, but he's just got a sliver of HP, and now will be popped. The flip has come in, Guangzhou back in control, ticking away, and they'll be able to have it 199 this time. Significantly better performance from Dynasty, but not good enough to get the win on Leisure. We see so many of these Winstons fail on this map versus the Reinhardt. But Rio played it so well. He played defensively when he needed to, but he was able to build enough charge consistently to get those two primals. And when we saw the swap over with the Wrecking Ball coming through from Marvel, that was just to tag onto the point. It was a rough moment there, but they were able to keep Munchkin healed. He did the damage, they get the flip, they keep the point, right? But Rio comes back, he's got another primal. So he's got the sustain advantage there against the Rhine in terms of that 1v1. But what he does is, or it's in this case versus the Wrecking Ball, by the way, even with the adaptive shield. Now, what we saw was Marvel go in and knock everyone up with a pile driver. But in that instant, very, very astutely, Rio is able to identify Ryu Jehong is not protected. They're not running a Rhine. He doesn't have the tank in the front line, or sorry, in the back line protecting him because the Wrecking Ball went in, right, with the pile driver. So he yeah. sees that. He kills Jehong. Then he can primal to re-enter the fight. He's got unlimited health. Really nice plays by Ryo, actually. And it, it does feel like you can see the pre-existing synergy from the Metabellum squad coming together here. And this match does feel like a, a battle of, with the exception of Jexay, right, with these two rosters, the old Korean talent that was at the top, which is what Seoul Dynasty is still today, for the most part, versus the new, right, the Contenders Korea lineups that we're seeing from Guangzhou. You've got Relo, you've got Happy, Chara, yeah. even Shu, you know, playing in Contenders for Toronto, with obviously the Chinese flavor of Eileen. It feels like new blood versus old here. And despite Seoul Dynasty's best efforts to make Munchkin the carry there on the Zarya, Guangzhou is just able to trade out consistently. And it's, again, very difficult to make that work on a Winston, especially when you lose that first, you know, when the Winston dies the first time, you almost always see a Ryan swap in Korea. No yeah. one sticks with the Winston. Rio is still able to make it work. Yeah, extremely rare to see him stick through with it, but uh, comes back in with a vengeance and absolutely crushes them. Primal Rage is very well done by him. Not sure if I, you know, he did end up getting killed at the one point, you know, going off the side of the map, but uh, it's all good. The performance otherwise was pretty spotless from Rio. Soul Dynasty now, onus on them to step up in the next map was a 2-0 on Li Zhang for Guangzhou to close that out. Now Hollywood getting ready to come through. Another map that very much does lend itself to the 3-3 style. Certainly does. Potential though. For that Widowmaker, we have seen some success yes. in Korean contenders with the Genji on the attack on point A. Maybe, just maybe, we'll see a little bit of that, a little bit of that here as we get ready to go. Sure, I mean, I map. think there's always the potential that Eileen pulls the Genji out here for the attack. If things are going poorly, if they don't have the old advantage, they could swap up, run into, you know, a Genji dive style composition with the, with the roster that they are currently running. For Seoul Dynasty, I feel like their biggest strengths were really in their support line. Jaehyung's positioning overall is very good, and he was constantly armored up. He stayed back so they could keep the armor from the rallies we were seeing coming out from Fleta. We also had Jexley not only contest the point multiple times to save them in overtime, but also had really well-timed sound barriers. So generally speaking, you know, I look at the support line on Seoul Dynasty and say, well, you know, this is your strength. This is what you've got to latch on to. Marvel losing out that matchup against the Winston was just, a, I, I want to say, a product of the synergy that we saw between the supports keeping Rio alive and how he played his Winston. Whereas the supports of Soul Dynasty were overall like kind of all rounded, really good, and maybe the better supports in that regard. But in terms of the laser focus that uh, Guangzhou had on Rio, Rio was able to just do too much. Yeah, I, I think this was a battle that was kind of lost in the front line, as you're saying here. And once that front line was lacking, they didn't have the Rhine shield to, to sit behind anymore for Jaehong. That's when he suffered the most. Wasn't really anything he could do in that position. Didn't have a transcendence built up. Even if he did, Primal Rage would have been able to knock him off the map and displace him and whatnot. So it was just such a, an awkward position to be in. The Wrecking Ball was needed, and he thought, you know, Marvel was like, I have to get back to the point. I have to do it immediately. Yeah. So swapping over to this would be even better. And you can't but swap back, you know, once you're on the point, you got, you're, you're stuck on it, right? I mean, I mean, he had it, they won the fight, and then he had built up about 60 some odd percent on the uh, on the minefield, I believe, and thought, you know, just go ahead and try to stick through with this. 
just mine off that bridge as they try to come across. But unfortunately for them, it's not enough to net a round win on Li Zhang. So a 0-2 loss for Seoul Dynasty to kick things off. But we'll be able to answer back on Hollywood, then you know potentially Hanamura and Route 6. Route 66, maps already set and ready to go. So if we if we look at history, right, um, if you look at Lunatic High, which, again, there's very few members left from the original Lunatic High sure. on this Soul Dynasty roster. We got this, the Zumba is really the big one with Jaehong, right? Um, but when you look back at history, Lunatic High lost control more than any other map type. They'd bounce back and win hybrid. They'd go 3-1, right? And that's kind of what I feel like when I when I watch this. We're going to have uh, Wonje Lee, now known as Rise, come in here for Shu for the Guangzhou Charge. But when I feel, uh, you know, about our history, you know, you and I casting Lunatic High, which is now Soul Dynasty, of course, um, in the background there, and these fans, we've seen this before. We've seen the, the O2s on control, and then the complete sweep afterwards. It's not out of the question that Soul is able to just completely turn this on its head. Doesn't look like we have any substitutions for the Dynasty here, though. Yeah, still we'll be sticking through with the same roster, it would seem. Sick Bastion heads here, by the way. Oh, wow. The Soul Dynasty That's logo. That's great. That's impressive. I mean, I'm guessing those are just cell phones placed into the front of them, but Could either be. way. I I'm can, always impressed, man. That is so cool. If that's not a cell phone, then I'm even more impressed if they actually made like a little LED screen in there. No, it's a it's a small it's a very small Windows 95 PC. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Nice. It just all it has is the the photo viewer that shows the GIF file there, yeah. <laughs> well, good to see the fans showing up still Korea having some of the best signs and or props in the audience. Oh, for sure. It's a very active crowd and the majority of these Seoul Dynasty fans have been here since like nine in the morning yeah whether they were at the quite early you and i didn't even arrive until 11. yeah and there were there were a you know small set of questionnaires um that were you know for vip fans that they could you know talk to the players earlier and some people have been here super early some people have just been here waiting at the door since that early because they're so excited to watch this match but it looks like we're ready for that hollywood map you mentioned you know the potential for soul to just you know, come back in this series on this map. We could see some dive. We could see, certainly with Eileen staying on the roster, that Genji come through. I think it's more likely, though, as is the way of the meta, that we're going to see 3-3 versus 3-3. It could very well be. Even with the changes to the shield bash, the damage coming through remember, might just not be enough. Remember, too, Lee Zhong is the map that's the best for 3-3 of the control maps available, you know, that we yeah. normally have in Korea. Hollywood could totally change it up. It's a much better map for Ash potentially, with all the high ground positions she could drop dynamite from. Bob can contest the cart. There's a lot of ways to utilize Ash on Hollywood. Happy still on the roster here for Guangzhou Charge. Good hit scan player. There's certainly that potential there if they want to move away from the 3-3. Well, let's see. It's going to be 3-3, three, three, or if they're going to be changing it up a bit as we jump in for the next map. Hollywood, the staging ground, Soul Dynasty. Can they come back into this, tie things up? Will Guangzhou charge, move forward with a 2-0 scoreline. Well, so far, it doesn't look that promising. <laughs> It's gonna be the 3-3 setup here on point A. Looks that way. Not a big shocker here for those who, uh, you know, wanted to see the, you know, just a little bit more variation here. It's just not going to happen on the defense. Marvel on the Rhine. Could be, you know, maybe they have some strats prepared for Owl Season 2 that they want to hide for now. Well, if you... So 3-3 is the best way to hide it. You know, if you're gonna do something like that, it's probably gonna be on the attack. As we take a look at Guangzhou, we saw the tease of potentially seeing that Reinhardt Winston we have seen in China a few times, but not actually going to be coming out here. It's going to be matched compositions. That Transcendence build is the most important part of this on Hollywood. That's why we're going to be watching Rise here, formerly Wan Jae Lee, an Apex player himself. Yeah, right now, Jae Hong getting a couple extra tags in comparatively. Hot Bug going so very low, dangerously so, in that mech. Up the top, looking for a couple hits there on a Zumba. Takes him down to about half HP, but so far will be okay. 
Wong Show Charge still playing up around the first corner, not looking to wrap around the backhand side. Rio going low. Jengse finds the first kill, though, as Chara will be taken down. That's going to be the go button here for Soul Dynasty. They push forward. Marvel finds a double. Jengse gets another one. That's going to be the cleanup here as they get the team wipe. Now, if you look, go back and watch the replay of this, you'll see the reason why Chara dies is because he goes up on the high ground. He wants to challenge Zumba and Jengse there, knock them off, and then take the low ground battle. But he's met with Jengse's fury. Jengse hits him with the headshots there. And plus, you have the extra damage from Zumba. He dies trying to knock them off the high ground. That ends up being a nice defense here for Guangzhou. Yeah, and now 25% advancement here on this ult for Munchkin. He is going to have to grab online. Happy still a little bit further behind as a rebuild that energy. Munchkin still going to be sitting here. Instantly surging forward up to 100. Grab thrown down right in front of Hoppa's face. Says, thank you very much. Tries to take the team away. Rides with the Transcendence out. Does help keep the rest of the squad alive. Blood are going to be taken down. Now Zumba, gone as happy, comes up with the kill there. Munchkin, however, answers back. Manages to find Rio. The Shatter coming down to delay the members of Guangzhou. So that Soul Dynasty can try to stay alive for a little bit longer here. All the support ultimates going to be used for Dynasty. Pushing forward still. Marvel getting booped over the side. Isolated, now taken down. He's overstepped. And that's going to be the punish coming through Guangzhou. They charge their way back over onto the point. Jengse, Munchkin, Jae Hong, you name them. They're all going to be dead. That'll open that's things the up. The first dick starting to come through. Guangzhou have found it. Charge just making this happen through a return to the point with Happy. He barely survived the first skirmish, but survives with high energy. Soul Dynasty underestimate how much damage output he has. They chase too far, trying to build extra ult charges. Soul Dynasty had that fight won. Make no mistake, they had the later support ult usage there. Very well-timed sound barrier from Jexe, but they just chased a little bit too hard to try to keep that ult lead. And Guangzhou is going to be able to maintain this attack now with a decent time bank on what's essentially the third push. Making their way up the street. The bomb going to be coming down, looking for a pickoff here, but Rio's just going to get a double. Marvel and Munchkin both falling to the right here. Drop back down. Jexay just trying to delay as best as possible. Chara gets him with the right click. Cart will start advancing. 340 still on the clock. Soul Dynasty need to put a halt to this. They're going to need to be careful about, uh, you know, these haphazard engages where they come in looking for ult charge and then, you know, leave their members there to try to slow the cart. Jexay staying there late means Guangzhou bleeds into extra ult charge. And Happy, as you can see, is nearly at that extra grab. He's got the high ground control. Nearly ready to go. Bubble coming down. Rio now going to have the shatter online. Fire strike into the face. Marvel gonna get dropped. Transcendence is out from Jay Hong, trying to keep everybody else topped up. A little bit too late to save his Ryan. Ryan's gonna be matching. Still, Cart now starting to advance again. They finally realize, oh, you know what? We weren't moving it up. They go back, they grab it. Oh, Jay Hong, very, very low. He lives, but Blaze's gonna have to give him some armor here. As you can see, Eileen's armor doing much more. In terms of that, they're gonna spill out the left side. Yep, Shatter's still ready to go. Slams it down. That's gonna be two members knocked to the ground, looking for the pin now. Rio will get bumped up, not able to find anything. Zumba bomb into the back, looking for a pickoff. Does manage to find Chara. Eileen and now Rio gonna be gone. A 3v6, Guangzhou will be stopped here on the push. Soul Dynasty able to stabilize momentarily. Guangzhou doubled down on blocking the right side choke point there with their ultimates. Rio leading in, trying to get the shatter there. But Soul Dynasty spilled out the left side. They didn't expect it. They got everyone out, which is rare. Hoppa should have been spotting for that, should have been, been able to identify that they were going to swap it up, not go for the right side twice, but actually switch over to the left side. So nice plays here by Soul Dynasty, but Guangzhou let them slip through and lose that momentum now as the cart is controlled by Soul. Making their way back over. Two minutes now remaining on the clock, Marvel. Going to have that shatter online. Oh, slow, but they do manage to save him. Slams it down, finds a couple here. Happy hits the floor. Rai's going to be eliminated with that Transcendence online. And now you can see here Eileen falling lower and lower. Marvel will be able to swing to get that kill. Guangzhou going to be held off yet again. Now under two minutes remaining, and they still have multiple ultimates on the side of Soul Dynasty to try to hold this off. Yeah, the most important thing is that Soul is keeping their support ultimates. So they have the answering ults to what Guangzhou can use on this next approach. Munchkin here only at 70 energy, and he's just looking for those right clicks for charge. But that's not the most important part. Everyone always wants to look at the Zarya, look at the grab charge, because those are the big flashy ultimates you see win fights, but it's the supports that counter them that are the more important ones. And Jexan and Jaehong are holding those ults right now as Guangzhou tries to sneak around here and get this into a wall, this grab. Zero energy for Happy. Yep, pushing forward here. Like you said, no energy. Now going to be bumping up the 40. Needs a bit more than that. Grab will be good, however, locks it in. That's going to be the transcendence out from Jaehong to try to keep them alive. Hoppa going to be getting his way back into the back, unable to find anything. 
Now Jex say down barrier through. Big shatter in onto the members of Soul Dynasty, but no one gonna get dropped yet. As I say that, however, Fleta will be taken down. Happy coming up with it. Marvel tries to get the slam. Gonna be a little bit weird on that. A little wonky on the angle as he gets pooped to the side. Gets the pin in onto Happy. Cannot take him down, but Zumba is doing work in the meantime. Bomb comes up with a pop out onto Hot Buzz Mech. That's gonna be Rise gone as well. And Soul Dynasty looking good here, just in front of point B, still maintaining control, but now no ultimates on either team. It's very firm hold here, and for Guangzhou, they just don't really have tools for the reapproach. Soul Dynasty even committed that last grab, which you could argue Munchkin didn't need to use, but he guaranteed the defense. He knows they used everything they had in that last fight, so this is really going to be two thirds of a push, not even a full push here for Guangzhou that they have to defend. Jay Hong poking out, getting closer and closer. Transcendence about to be online. Could be the turning point in the fight here for Soul Dynasty to stop them from advancing into B. Pushing forward, Jay Hong goes ahead, throws down the Transcendence. Chatter gonna be out for Marvel. This time it's gonna be good. Rio and Eileen dead off the bat. Hotba getting melted out of the mech. They're trying to keep him alive. Rise popping the Transcendence just a bit too late. Um, but will get burned down right before he can get that self-destruct online to try to turn something around with a Hail Mary toss. OT will tick down and Soul Dynasty successfully defend this cart just in front of B. Very well done here. Soul Dynasty completely bouncing back after what was a rough tank line defeat there on Li Zhang. They were able to stay really efficient in terms of their ultimates there. Control that choke, take these fights, you know, trading up in support ultimates, Jexay and Jaehong, right? We talked about how on Li Zhang, they were the big players. They were the ones who didn't make any mistakes, who had those support ultimates ready most of the time. It was just unfortunate that the mismatch there for Marvel and how many times uh, Ryo was able to get those big primals. But when you look at this map in particular, you could feel the strength of the support line. You could see how difficult it is for Happy to come in and make those grabs valuable. Not only that, but they're positioning themselves and targeting correctly to keep his energy low. I mean, he was approaching into that last grab fight with zero energy, which is super rare, right? Doesn't mean you can't grab, doesn't mean you can't take the fight, because it's about the CC more than the damage there yep. on the grab. But it's, it's just a symbol of how well Soul is playing around this 3-3 right now. Now, if we were ever gonna see, uh, you know, something weird from Guangzhou, it was probably gonna be on the attack, right? <laughs> so given that yeah. they're showing us the 3-3 here, now it's not really a big surprise. Soul Dynasty flashing a couple different heroes here at the moment, of course, the Ash there from Marvel, but will likely just be back over to the standard GOATS style momentarily. I'm really liking how Soul is playing 3-3 at the, at the moment, to be honest with you, Achilles It's looking really clean. Uh, and it's impressive, you know, Fleta said in his interview earlier that he wanted to be the player that shows he's a big flex. He can play any hero, not just the one where he's been doing just that. Uh, he is showing us the Widow here from the start. Yeah, showing it at least from the beginning. Did see them pushed out. He's operating over onto the right-hand side, but yeah, not going to be able to get a shot off. He wants to kill the Zen if possible. If he gets a line of sight on that Zen who's right-clicking, then they could probably actually force a, a cap, or at least a tick at worst-case scenario. Yeah, it'd be a very strong push, but doesn't get that angle that he wants, so we'll just be back over onto the Brigida. And then we're forward. Zimba right now up onto the high ground here. It's going to be a full kite around, actually. Looking for a drop-down, perhaps. Stairwell a bit too risky given the Rhine charge, so yeah, just gonna be drop in. Avoid that initial corner. Double through on to Rio. Char into the back. Is he gonna get punished? He's down below half HP. They're trying to focus him out. He will not go down. Rio in the meantime, however, tag down below half HP. Marvel and Zumba gonna be the same story for them. Pushing forward. Marvel gonna be gone. Rio still barely managing to stay alive. Guangzhou managed to keep that Rhine up in the front lines. They kept they pick up a couple kills here. Soul Dynasty's gonna have to reset. Yeah, it was a lead for Ult Charge for Jaehong the entire time, but he couldn't get it before Rise. He couldn't actually get in and use that to start to flip the point. They were banking this entire attack on getting the trance and using Munchkin's grab on top of it. But unfortunately, it just doesn't happen quickly enough. And Guangzhou's now gonna have this control. They have the answering trance for Munchkin's grab when he decides to use it. Here's the rally to lead in to set up for the grab. Yeah, Fleta leading the charge on that one. Now Eileen gonna be matching. Grab ready to go for Munchkin. Happy. So very close now, has it online. He's gonna pull the trigger first here is the question. Near 100 energy for Munchkin. It's a support old chicken here, you know. I mean, whoever drops that first is gonna have the disadvantage. So many alts online now for Guangzhou. If they lose, this would be huge. The shadow coming down from Rio. Not gonna be able to find anything. Now pushing forward, ground down search comes down, locks up a few. Transcendence is in from Rise. Bomb comes into the front. Zumba looking for a pick, but instead he will get taken down by Hot Buzz. Pushing forward in onto the point. Sound barrier out from Shara. Jexay holding on to one of his own. Has not used it yet. 
Still working their way through. Maybe thinking they can take it without it. Now we'll go ahead and invest the ultimate. Pushing forward, Marvel into the cafe. Swinging away the fire strike to the face. Takes down Rise. Looks for the pin. Hot going to get knocked out of the back. And Soul Dynasty will be able to break this defense here on point A. It's going to be a pretty decent time bank as well as the ultimates they hold after this. They could use that to steamroll this forward. This is by no means a point that Guangzhou could come into tag in and contest. It's not reasonable. They're going to have to look for a better defensive setup here where they have the concave advantage on the defense outside of the gates. They can't contest that either. So Soul gets all this push for free. The only thing they're really missing here, to be honest, is Jexay's ult charge. That's why the Korean observers are showing. He's probably going to get a little bit greedy here with some left clicks to try to build it up, because otherwise Soul Dynasty has every advantage you can think of at the moment. Yeah, looking pretty darn good if they can set up for a big shatter here. Graviton Surge. Oh, not going to be the best here. Only catches up Rio, and if they can kill him, it still will be quite good. They do manage to finish him off here in the end. Marvel swinging away, gets that hit. Shatter used as well. Rio going to be taken down just before he can get that Shatter online, but he'll be able to join back in. He'll build up that ult naturally as he gets ready to respawn. And this is the most important fight for Soul to take, where Guangzhou has the control of the choke. They can't fight in the gate. They can't use that choke, but they can fight outside of it with a concave. Soul commits the ults there, knowing they have the ult advantage. They know this one timing window they have to shove that through, and Guangzhou just unfortunately doesn't have any answer. Picking up Rio was the best thing Soul could do right there, and they get this card all the way around the corner. Yeah, killing one or killing six, they're going to get about the same amount of this either way, so the cart gonna be rolling up just in front of where it needs to be with three minutes remaining on the clock. Guangzhou, however, their ultimates are starting to come online. They nearly have six. If Chara can just build up for that sound barrier, Soul Dynasty, it might take a couple little eco pushes here. Minor, minor skirmishes. They're trying to build that up. Graviton Search gonna be coming in. Jexe disappears right off the bat. Jayhawk still commits in with a transcendence, but everybody's still gonna be getting dropped. So now they're down a Zen ultimate. Guangzhou good at the start of the defense. Soul Dynasty, can they turn this around? That's the question here. They've still got a decent amount of time bank. Really nicely done by Guangzhou. The speed boost from Chara perfectly timed to set up for that fight on top of Happy's grab. Rio didn't even really need to commit that uh, shatter there to actually win the fight. He's going to save it here for the flank. They don't oh. know where he is. They're not tracking him. He's trying to play sneaky. Okay, they do manage to spot him out. Nice. <laughs> Get the heck out of there with the charge. Let's go ahead. Managed to retreat successfully. Shield taking a beating. Still healthy on the Rhine, though. Still going to be looking for that shatter. Just fine. One moment. Shield's going to be going lower. He's pushing forward. The shield comes up in time. Marvel saves it. Shatter from Rio. Not going to find anything. Now that's going to be the go button for Soul Dynasty as they try to push forward. The sound barrier in the bomb from Zuma. Finishes the fine rise. Eileen dead just moments before. Chara throws down that sound barrier, trying to keep the dregs of his team alive. And in the mix, the pin coming through. Nearly missing Chara, but he still swings him. Swings onto him and manages to get the kill. The cleanup comes through. Guangzhou, just with Ryze and Eileen alive, gonna have to try and this to is hold tough. this I one mean, off. They're gonna have to. They're gonna somehow have to get out of these chokes. I just don't think it's gonna happen. Zumba's not checking the left side, but they know the right's the faster way. Yeah, Ryze does have that transcend. It's ready to go to Shatter coming in. Marvel looking for the pin, unable to find it. Shield comes up, grabbing hot search, locking him in. Happy, happy. Though. looking to turn things around. Rio gonna get dropped so far. So only losing out on the Fleta. Marvel comes up with another one as Jara will be eliminated and Hot Buy is knocked out of the mech. A couple meters left to go. They'll start inching forward. They clean up the baby Diva, and Soul Dynasty will be able to tie up this series one to one. Very much, you know, feels like the old days. I was talking about the dominance we saw from Lunatic High after losing control so many times. Different squads, same history, same background here in Soul Dynasty. And they're able to do it off of good defensive ults. That was not about the attack for Soul Dynasty. That was about their solid defense. Jaehong and Jexe carrying the team to victory off the back of insane ult efficiency there. In the last fight, they knew they had enough of a time advantage there and the respawn advantage, I should say, that they knew that Guangzhou charge could only come really outside of the right door. If they tried to take the left one, they probably wouldn't tag in on time. That's a rise poked his head out. He was trying to get in there, get that trance off to buy that time but Soul just collapsed there. They understood their advantages perfectly. Not to mention that, but the pick onto Rio that we saw when they did first capture A and break through those gates, they knew, like, look, if I if I drop this grab here, if we go for this fight, they can't do anything. If they retreat, we still win, we get around the corner. If they fight us, they lose, we keep our ult advantage, and we continue to push this around the corner. That's the hardest part, right, is getting through that gate. And because Guangzhou used all their ults on the defense, which failed, Soul knew they tracked their ultimates. They knew they had the bigger war chest there to continue the push forward. 
So really good decision making by Soul Dynasty on a more macro map, right? A bigger map, a broader map where those kind of decisions make a lot more uh, impact than on Lijiang, for example, where it's like, aha, I got the first cap, I'm in the choke, I got a shatter, <laughs> I got a grab, like, good luck getting through this one. Yeah. It's a little bit less black and white. Well, tying things up, not going down without a fight, not allowing Guangzhou Charge to advance onto that match point in quotations. Like we said, we don't think we have any sort of tiebreaker here. We'll just be four maps played guaranteed no matter what the score line. But a very nice start. We'll go ahead and yeah, throw over to an interview though, so we'll take it away. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. First, I'm going to interview the champion of 1998, the champion of 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 the 오늘 지금 2 세트까지 경기를 좀 해봤는데 1 세트 이겼어요. 좀 본인들 지금 2 세트까지 끝나고 나서의 소감이 좀 어떤지 지금 1대 1인데 어1 세트에는 저희가 원하는 대로 약간 잘 돼가지고 이긴 것 같은데 2 세트 이제 결정적으로 궁 설계 있어가지고 팀원 간의 의사소통이 조금 안 되다 보니까 그럼 남은 경기 두 경기도 충분히 해볼 만하다고 생각을. 하는 거군요. 네, 저희가 본 기량만 나오면은 so 이세트처럼 아마 이기지 않을까 생각합니다. 알겠습니다. 사실 사라 선수 하면 콘텐더즈에서 굉장히 오랫동안 so 좋은 모습을 보여주는 또 루시우 like, 여러 가지 메인 일러로서 좀 보여줬었는데 you know, 사실 이제는 리그 선수잖아요. Yeah. 리그 선수로서 사실 이렇게 오프라인 무대에서 뭔가 큰 대회 경기를 해보는 것 자체가 굉장히 좀 생소할 수가 있는데 좀 소감이 어떻습니까? 어, so 일단 uh, 한국 콘텐더즈하고 그래서 Uh, 분위기 자체도 now, 많이 다르고요. 팀원들 간에 그리고 대회할 때 가지는 마음가짐도 약간 좀더 프로페셔널해진 것 같아요. Uh, uh, 그 광저 차지에 대해서 uh, 사실 uh, 많은 분들이 아직 모르실 수도 있고 so 신생팀이다 보니까 actually. 그런 점에 있어서 약간 생소할 수가 uh, 있는데 본인이 생각하기에 광저 차지의 오늘의 좀 에이스는 누구다? 본인이라고 해도 돼요. Uh, so 저희 팀의 하빠 선수. 하빠 선수가 에이스다. Uh, uh, 뭐 이유가 따로 있습니까? 자탄을 잘 먹어요. 아, 오늘 경기에서만 해도 엄청나게 자탄을 먹고 있으니까 잘한다라는 얘기고요. 알겠습니다. 그럼 마지막으로 이제 남은 경기 또두 경기 남았는데 어, 팬분들에게 각오 한마디 들어보도록 하겠습니다. 이 어, 세트 살짝 부진해서 밀려서 지는 모습 보여드렸는데 남은 경기 이 세트처럼 앞쪽으로 so 이어보도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네. 차라 선수의 인터뷰 잘. 자 이렇게 되면 이 상대했던 팀의 얘기를 안 들어볼 수가 없겠죠. 제 옆에는요. 1991년 9월 5일생 내년을 숨어 나온 산 아홉수 문화 류씨 천여자리 류정 선수 모셨습니다. 안녕하세요. 자기 소개 간단하게 한번 해주시고요. 안녕하세요. 내년 스물아홉 류재영입니다. 오늘 경기에서 사실 일 세트를 굉장히 좀 어떻게 보면 압도적으로 좀 패배를 했어요. 물론 마지막까지 가는 세트도 있었습니다만은 좀 어땠어요? 패배했을 때. 일단 1 세트 같은 경우 저희가 첫 시작부터 원하던 플레이를 딱 막히자마자 거기서 좀 다들 팀원들끼리 주눅 들었던 것 같아요. 그래서 원하던 플레이를 잘 못했고 이 세트 들어갈 때 이제 저희끼리 잘 다듬어서 다독여서 다독여서 이제 잘 다독인 거 맞죠? 잘 다독였습니다. 네. <웃음> 그래서 조금. 주눅 든 거를 풀어서 그나마 좀잘 됐던 것 같아요. 다음 세트도 계속 그렇게 네. 이어나가려고 so, anyways, all, 얘기를 해야죠. To, to 사실 이 류재영 선수 같은 경우에도 so, 굉장히 오랫동안 선수 생활을 해왔었고 yeah. 리그도 많이 뛰었었습니다만은 사실 리그가 끝나고 어느 정도 기간이 길었잖아요. 쉬는 기간이 좀 길었었기 so, 때문에 off, 이런 뭔가 so, 대회 so, 문제가 so, 좀 어색할 수도 있는데 오늘 좀 어떻습니까? Uh, 오늘 지금 많이 field. 떨리고 좀 It's 엄청 떨리는 것 같아요. 누가 제일 좀 많이 떨고 있나요? 제가 제일 많이 떠는 거 본인이 who's, who's the most nervous? Uh, 제가 제일 me. 많이 떠는 거 같아요. <웃음> 네, 알겠습니다. 그러면 이 차라 선수에게도 한번 물어봤었는데 서울 대노스티도 사실 기존의 선수들도 많이 있습니다만 Char. 새로운 선수도 많잖아요. 네. 그 새로운 선수들까지 포함했을 때 우리 서울 대노스티의 지금 좀 에이스는 누구다? So I asked her kind of about 저는 the ace, so 개인적으로 the, the ace well. 저희 메인 탱두 명이 에이스라고 생각합니다. 마블, 피셔, 이두 명이 에이스다. 알겠습니다. 많은 좀 지켜보도록 하겠고요. 자 그러면. 우리 류정 선수에게도 마지막 질문 드리겠습니다. 남은 경기 이제 두 세트 남았는데 팬분들에게 좀 안심하시라고 이기겠다. 라는 각오의 한 마디 부탁드리겠습니다. 어 남은 두 경기 아두 세트 저희가 이기도록 열심히 할게요. 제가 그래서 팬들에게 보답하도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다.
자 이렇게 류재웅 선수의 인터뷰까지 들어봤고요. 저희는 지금 1, 2세트를 까지 지켜본 상황에서 광저우 차지 서울 다이너스티 서울 다이너스티 광저우 차지 1대1로 2세트까지 끝난 상황입니다. 잠시 후에 3세트로 저희는 돌아와서 여러분들 결승 경기 보내드리겠습니다. Makes sense. We still will have an equal amount of support here showing up today. That's uh, some loud music, but hey. Who's that? Who's that? I don't know. But guys, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the rest of the series, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Just a short little break there to kind of, you know, break things up a little bit. Got the first half now. Get ready to move into the second half where you're currently tied up one to one. And Who's already, that? you're going to be seeing some new faces on stage. Both teams have decided to change up the rosters. That's right. So we will be having a lot of shifts here coming into the third map. Yeah, time to, kind of, I think, focus on some of the weak points on both of these squads. Potentially, just give these guys a shot at playing on stage, as you guys can see here. Uh, this could be willy-nilly swapping. This could actually be in response to the match results. We don't really know. We just know that new players are coming out, including Nero there on the side of Guangzhou, and that is damn exciting. Yeah. We are going to... Uh, oh! Hey, what's up? That's yeah, Miro. We're going to talk about the exact, the exact subs in a moment. Um, as we will have four of them, yeah. uh, you know, as you guys probably saw there. But yeah, I mean, I think that for Seoul Dynasty, we're looking at strong support line. It's what you'd expect. You've got Daddy Jaehong, you know, he's your young. He's going to be telling you what you got to do. He's calming everybody down. And he's playing, honestly, he and Jexe, playing the best of all, all the six Seoul Dynasty members I think we saw in, that, in the first two maps there. He's hitting his trances really well. And that's impressive, given that he's one of the oldest players that we have, just period, like in Overwatch League. He's the, obviously the oldest player on the squad yep. and has the most experience. So it's good that he's able to come in and not only be able to you know, have that almost coach-esque role as a playing coach and you know the captain of the team, but also still be playing like top tier form. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Runner was very similar on Runaway for a long time for being the playing coach, because he was the coach, but he was also playing. Yeah. He was kind of the captain. He was the leader of the team, person who made the team. 
but he wasn't as good. He was, you know, he was falling off and eventually stepped out of the booth completely, right? Didn't play the Lucio anymore. Whereas Jaehong is actually like still killing it. Like we're watching Jaehong kill it right now, and that's that's really cool to see. That's like I think my biggest takeaway for Dynasty so far. It's been a fan I mean, it's been really good, honestly, from both support lines uh, so far. I mean, Rise maybe not as strong as we had seen from the the beginning of the series when we had Happy in, but um. It's still, it's still been pretty dark. Oh, for Shu in, sorry. Damn, he's still there. When we had Shu in, uh, I was thinking happy because he has had so many grabs eaten by Zumba because I was about to give him some praise here. Uh, it's, it's good to see a lot of these older players still performing so very well. So for like Jae Hong and Zumba here, kind of the core of that Lunatic High roster to still be uh, at that level, to still be performing very well individually at least, it's very refreshing to see. Now we'll get to, uh, we saw him, it's not spoilers, Toby will be joining them, so another one of those staple members from Lunatic High will be taking to the stage and we'll get to see how, uh, you know, things are going to be differing between these two guys who have played together as a support line for so very long. Uh, and then what we just saw with the new support player of Jexe there. But first, on the side for, of the charge, it will be Nero coming through. Eileen going to be stepping away. So Eileen has been playing the Brigida so far, and he's been one of the bigger assets for Guangzhou Charge, in my opinion. But this means that, you know, we just want to see, we're going to maybe see Nero come in and play the Brigida himself. Uh, and, and kind of we'll see the comparing styles between the two of them. Or... It means that we're going to see potentially some sort of other DPS from this guy as we head into Hanamura, which we already know is going to be our fixed third map here. Could Michelle be. is a, uh, you know, D.Va player, as mentioned, but he's subbing in for Zumba. So one of the exciting things for us potentially, even though we knew it probably wasn't going to happen because Zumba's been playing so much D.Va. He's played way, 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 way more D.Va than he's <laughs> ever going to play Zarya. Um, we were hoping maybe we'd see Michelle be the D.Va and Zumba go back to the Zarya, his legendary hero. But it's not going to be the case. The dream what, is dead! From what we can see, Michelle is just going to be a Zumba sub here, and they're going to be playing the same role. Yep. Um, you already mentioned we had Toby. Here's Fisher. So Marvel will be taking a step out here. Fisher's coming in. It'll be the first time wearing the Soul Dynasty jersey in an official match after being on so many teams. Kongdu Panthera into London Spitfire, Gladiators, and now Soul. So he's seen his fair share of teams, a very vocal player. Very outspoken, very good at English. We've got a ton of fans here in Korea as well as abroad. And I think everyone's excited to see how he's going to do because Seoul Dynasty's main tank line with Miro, who's now retired, uh, was one of their big weak points in Season 1. So he's the sure. big pickup everyone is looking at right now. So exciting to see this legendary player, one of the better Winstons always here in Korea, kind of leading the new charge with gesture in terms of the new play style on this roster. And back to buy the Boop God, the OG Boop God, I should say. So as we already mentioned, Toby gonna be coming in, Jexe gonna be stepping away. Both Jexe uh, and Chara having some fantastic moments on the Lucio there. Some decently bloodthirsty play for um, you know, a map, especially on Hollywood, that does not have any environmental kill potential. Uh, so still, we're seeing those Lucios pop up in the kill feed from time to time. Let's see if Toby still got it. I think that the difference between Toby and Jexay, I mean, they're very similar in play style, but the difference between Toby and Jexay is Jexay is more aggressive, but he's also a more aerial Lucio. He plays higher. He's looking to use the high ground. He's trying to knock people off. Toby's positioning is really god tier. He's going to survive almost anything by hiding, by being around the corner that you know he was on. He's going to find you and get those environmental kills because you didn't know where he was. He's going to block that EMP because you thought he was too far away. You thought maybe you were going to hit him. Uh, with the EMP, maybe you thought he just wasn't in the fight. Maybe you thought, you know, he's just not going to be able to hit that barrier. But you're wrong because he's around the corner. So Toby is often unseen, which makes him so terrifying. When you fight him in a 1v1, as Hawks all learned so many seasons ago, uh, he will kill you as well. It's yeah. a very different type of survivability between the two of them, but they're both so difficult to kill. And that's what makes them great Lucio players. Well, we'll see if things are going to be changed up as far as the compositions for Hanamura. I mean, there is a bit of potential for that in in Korean contenders. Of course, we have seen uh, a lot of Farah, a lot of Widowmaker on this map. The Doomfist Sombra defense, of course, but now with the Doomfist nerfs, maybe a little bit less likely that we have that play come through. But if they're truly feeling uh, confident enough, even with the nerfs, to perform on that pick, just maybe. Yeah, we'll I mean, have it come in. You'd expect that if we were going to see Dai from Guangzhou, we'd see Eileen in, but Nero is also a projectile player, can play the Genji, can play the Farah. So certainly something that 
uh, is still viable, it's even though not what you would expect, because Eileen is definitely of the two players, the more famous, you know, the player who stands out more as the carry DPS. Maybe Nero's going to show us something different tonight as we head into Hanamura for game three. Yep, as mentioned, so everything set, ready to go. Just had to get enough time for the new players to get situated on stage, make sure all of their settings were going to be ready. We could play their in their tip-top shape. The it very, very like, best. Uh, we're pretty much ready to go in that regard, so we should be jumping into Hanamore to see which one of these two teams is going to be able to take a lead in this series again and take it up to a theoretical match point if we were going to be running this like a contenders matchup, like an Al matchup. But, uh, you know, could end up going 2-2 in the end. Maybe we'll have to make some kind of agreement with them on stage to play one final round of control to get a tiebreaker. I don't know. We'll see what happens if that does occur. But for now, one team going to be looking up the move up to one. Hanamura has delivered many, many rounds for us in contenders throughout pretty much all levels of play in, this in meta, Overwatch. For sure. This one, it could be a very long set. So strap in, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready to jump into this one on Hanamura. And here we are. Here we are. It's time for what could be our most varied map yet in terms of compositions. It's uh, It's been a long time for you and I to commentate Toby and Jaehong together on the support line. Very true. You know, in Korea we have the... To commentate a lot of these players. Yeah. Well, for, for us in Korea we have the roles, you know, uh, split up the tanks in the first two slots, the DPS in the center. In this meta, obviously, they still function as tanks a lot of the time. Then the support's on the right. And they're always hanging out on the right side, Toby and Jaehung. That's where they belong. It's exciting to see them again together here. For the attack here, we see Happy teasing that hog, but we know it's not going to happen. Yep, just a tease in the end. We'll just be that 3-3. Three, three. Pushing up here towards the gates. Munchkin looking to poke out a bit. Build up towards that Graviton Surge. Up onto the high ground there, Chara. Scoping things out. They're going to break their way through the gate already, actually. So Dynasty, can they put a stop to this? Fisher getting tagged up, going lower and lower as they try to keep him alive, but he is going to be the first one taken down. Rio with the fire strike finds the kill, but he himself will be answered for as Jay Hong drags it back here in favor of Soul Dynasty, evening the playing field. They get the kill onto the enemy run, and Guangzhou just go ahead and exit back to the game. You, put, you mentioned it earlier on Hollywood. One kill is as good as six kills in this meta. When you get a kill like that, when you get the pick on the tank, it doesn't matter. They have to back off. They don't want to bleed over ult charge too happy. And they're kind of stuck out here now. Yeah. They are going to rejoin with Fisher now and, and look for the right side approach, but it's a very difficult angle. To work their way back through here. The first hit going to be gained for free for the side of the charge. Rise in the back, building up, getting closer and closer to that transcendence. Jay Hong going to be lagging behind in that regard. Toby, however, comes up, finds the kill as Rio gets taken down. Now Fisher again in exchange to the Reinhardts. Both of them just going to get dropped. Transcendence is in from Rise. Jay Hong, yeah. very, very close to having one of his own flat, trying to make his way out of here. Shield bashes to the side, keeps himself alive. Munchkin with a grab, throws it down, finds a double kill. Nero and Happy, both going to be eliminated in Soul Dynasty. Again, despite losing out on their Reinhardt, manage to hold off. They give up about 50% of the the point for free, but they still managed to maintain and control. And it's so similar to what we just saw earlier with Munchkin on Li Zhang, where the fight looks lost for Soul Dynasty, but he's got the support, he's got the extra armor there from Flata, who barely survives to do that extra healing, give that armor pack, and he does the massive damage that's required to flip the point back in their favor. For Guangzhou, losing that grab on the attack is going to feel so bad because it's going to take so long to build that. So much time will be lost. Pushing their way forward, Shatter going to be ready to go. Fisher still trying to build up for one of his own. Stun comes in, shield comes back. Up Rio trying to keep himself safe, but it's not gonna happen. J Ho kills him again. Shatter in from Fisher looking for the pin. Boop over to the side. It's gonna be denying that one away, but happy will still get dropped. Now Chara joining him in the grave and pushing back forward here towards the spawn. Soul Dynasty just gatekeeping them. Yeah, this is looking really rough for Guangzhou. Happy only building 20% more charge here. By the time he's got it, Jaehong should easily have not only the armor that he still holds now, but the transcendence to match it, to answer it. Fisher's lack of a, you know, 
Shatter here is one of the big issues. Grab going to be online. Does he have it in time for the push? Could throw it straight into the gate. No, it's going to be right down into the front. Drops it down. Rally going to be out from Fleta. Looking to keep him alive. Chara going to be taken down. They managed to find Fisher. How are you trying to Shatter from Rio? Locking him in. Looking for the pin. Gives Jay Hall. And he's still in transcendence. He's out. Uh, uh, not this time. Michelle, however, popped out of the mech. And Fleta will be taken down. So Guangzhou is still going to be advancing here despite the transcendence from Jay Hong. Now he's eliminated. This should be them breaking in onto the point with the time bank. Severely limited compared to where it was looking like it was going to be at the start of the push. Down under a minute, they will go ahead and get this cap, about 4.50 on the clock. We have to remember that the Earth Shatter that comes out from Rio here is really what turned the fight. Even though Jaehong has the answering transcendence, that's not going to cure CC. Everyone's still locked up. That gives Guangzhou the opportunity to get a positional advantage as they do become, you know, once they stand up. Guangzhou's on top of them there as the transcendence expires. They do the damage. Happy holds the grab in that longer push. He builds it. Oh, wow, very aggressive drop down here from Dynasty. Could come back to bite them, in fact. Yep, Graviton Surge going to be coming down. Locks them up right here in front of the point. Michelle, now Fisher going to be gone. Bomb out from Hot Pot, not going to find a pickoff. They do manage to trade one back as Nero will get taken down, but the baby even now going to be eliminated. Munchkin will fall as well. Salt Dynasty now out four people. Fisher swapping over onto the Wrecking Ball. That Snowball getting ready to come through. They pu push their way back over onto the point. Adaptive Shield comes in from Fisher, just trying to stay alive. Push their way back in. Rio charging forward. Has that bubble ready to go. Shatter online as well. Fisher now going to be eliminated. Swinging away. Shatter comes down. Locks him in the sound barrier. Used by Toby, however. Does keep them alive. Kill's not going to be there. Maybe now they can stabilize. Pushing back forward. Sound barrier's out from Guangzhou. Chara. Swing to keep his team in the mix. Pile driver straight nice on top of here. With a grab. Locking him up. But they need the kills to come through. Instead, it's going to be Guangzhou yet again. Finding two as Munchkin and Rio Jehong both go down. Michelle now going to get popped dead. out of the mech. Happy, such high energy here. Looking to burn down Fisher. Gets that Discord Orb on him, and they absolutely melt him. Flutter with a swap over on it to the Widowmaker. Munchkin onto the Tracer. Flutter taking some shots, looking for a target. Gets a body tag there on a rise. Pop up over the top. Cannot find the headshot. He's going to be walled off, however. And they just try to hit the kill. Flutter will be able to bow him down with the machine gun. And despite all of the insanity, all of the swaps, Soul Dynasty will be able to maintain control, only giving up 61.1%. Even though, even though Munchkin can die there, you know, he was able to do enough damage to buy time. The Wrecking Ball comes through, Fisher builds the minefield, and those two things buy enough time for the for the, the Tracer to come out. Munchkin swaps over that after his death. They buy enough time. We see the Maywalls come through, and Guangzhou gets halted there. Just some good stalling tactics there by Soul Dynasty, Fletus Widow especially. Yet again, the aggressive drop down, and Char is the first one to fall. Fisher finds him with the hammer, takes him out. Now this time, the drop-off works way better. Last time, they didn't have any ultimates and Guangzhou had the ult advantage, so they kind of walked into a trap there. But this time they know Guangzhou used the majority of their ultimates in that last fight. If, they, if Ryze had tranced there when they got collapsed on, for example, that'd be a huge win for Dynasty. So they knew this time it was going to be a lot more successful. If they do it again here, though, they're really playing with fire. Pushing their way up here onto the high ground. Ryze going to be using the transcendence already to escort them forward. Munchkin taken down in the back of the pin from Rio. Gonna be the sound barrier out from Toby, looking to keep them all topped up. Rio under some fire, trying to stay alive. Bomb up into the air, hop out, looking for a pick, not gonna be able to find it. Makes his way back into the mech safely, however. Now Jay Hong will push forward the, with the transcendence up. Chara gonna be matching with a sound barrier. Guangzhou try to take a fight right here, right now. Try to get that finish. Happy gonna be eliminated, however. They need more kills. Yeah, they need a lot more than that. Rally's gonna be ready to go. Bomb comes down from Michelle, not able to find a pick, but he makes it back into the mech. Good for that shield bash forward. Can't quite get the lockdown. Chara finds a pick there. Onto Michelle's mech, taking him out. In on the point, trying to work their way up towards that second tick. Still going to be halted. The shatter from Fisher. It's going to be big. Locks him in, but now the transcendence is up yet again for Rice. Building that one up rapidly. Rio as well. Shatter ready to go, looking for an opportunity, waiting for that trance to expire from the side of Jay Hong. Slams it down, finds Spletta, locks him in. Fire strikes there, and Nero goes forward, manages to find the kill. Rio over to the side. No one to pin. Gets locked up, stunned up. Still, is going to be staying alive because Munchkin and Flutter both get taken down. Fisher in the corner. Going to be eliminated. Jay Hong, the only one who's been able to find a kill in this whole god awful mess of a fight as he takes down Rise. But the kills are so much in favor for Guangzhou at this point. The second tick comes through. But look at the time bank. Absolutely shattered compared to where they started. Compared to that first push that they nearly converted into a snowball cap. 4.50 at the beginning, now down to 53 seconds. Yeah, for everyone watching at home, I think to a lot of people, to the layman watching this, it looks like, well, I just watched Guangzhou Charge win five team fights 
but still couldn't get the point. What's going on? How are these guys unable to snag it? Are they messing up? Are they missing their ults here? No, the reality is one kill on the defense is worth three on the attack. When you are able to get only one pick slowly, time after time, the defending team is going to have the faster respawn. They're going to come in. They're going to come in with stagger heroes. They're going to delay. We're going to see the wrecking ball come out. You're going to see the may come out. Sometimes even the doom fist, not particularly in this case. But those are the delay heroes that are going to come out. You're going to need more than one pick or two picks on the defense. If you go two to one, in kills, if you get two kills, they get one. You get two more, they get a second one. It doesn't matter if you're not getting those ticks, if you're not getting control of the point. And Guangzhou just wasn't able to do that. Really nice plays here by Soul Dynasty to buy that time. Some definitely risky stuff going on upstairs. Where they collapse down on the center balcony instead of waiting and collapsing onto the point because Guangzhou was ready to match them there. And they almost lost the first push because of it. That time make you were talking about the 450. It was almost a four finish, four minute finish there. Uh, because of that risky play, but they were able to make the second one more valuable and then delay there. So, sure, Guangzhou gets the finish, but in this meta, a 51-minute time bank is not secure at all. It doesn't make you feel safe. Second, 51-minute so time bank oh, would sorry. be incredible. 51 seconds, sorry. 51-second <laughs> time bank is not enough because Soul Dynasty could go for the double cap here. Yep. I mean, it happens all the time, so you really got to be tight on the defense. But again, looking for an opening shot. Will not be able to find anything, so it swaps back over onto the Brig. Pushing their way forward. I don't think wasting any time. Okay, we'll go ahead and kite back. I was going to say, Fisher getting really antsy. Wants to get himself into that point. Right, his way back. Fire strike. Not going to be good. Doesn't clip in. On a planet. That's going to be the go button. Pin is there. Happy eliminated. They push forward. Fisher gets a double. Now Rio out of the fight. Work their way in onto the point and Soul Dynasty, they're looking for the seven plus minute time bank here as they get ready to go over towards B. Fire strike in, cleaning them up. Chara goes down. That'll be it. Do you know when you're Soul Dynasty here, the enemy has such a weak time bank, 51 seconds. So why not take the risk? Why not just play around Fisher? Why not look for a charge kill? If it works, you end up with a massive time bank. It's going to be 7.04 here as a time bank. If the first push fails off of your charge, sure, Guangzhou is going to walk away with a slight ult lead, but you know you're not looking for the greatest time bank in the world to even match. So why not take one risk? It pays off massively here for Soul Dynasty, a decisive play. And now they've got all the time in the world, six minutes of time to match the time bank at worst case. And the way forward, Chara maybe going to be looking for a boop off here. Goes forward, knocks him down onto the low ground, disconnecting the squad. The rest of the team piling here on the lower side, just making sure that they're all playing as a unit. Ryan's going to get tagged up, manages to stay alive. Nearly has that transcendence online. Jay Hong getting ready to match. Chara stand up for the moment. We'll be able to stay in the fight. Transcendence out for Jay Hong first. Shatter available for Rio, waiting for an opportunity. His barrier going lower and lower. Fisher nearly with another shatter. Slams it in, but the, the sorry, a bubble is there. Fisher just eats the shatter to the face. Rio gets absolutely nothing. Yeah, this is looking like a good fight here, though, for Soul Dynasty. Answering shatters there on a hot butt, goes for the pin. The mech's already broken. Now the pilot form is going to be out and taken down. Jay Hong comes up with a kill. Sound barrier in from Shara. Happy Toby that grab. holding onto one of his own. Jay Hong nearly to another transcendence. That's going to be the graviton surge locking him up. Michelle will be taken down. Fisher trying to stay alive. Live Toby staying in the mix does manage to survive and Jay Hong trance gonna be up now pops it instantly as soon as it comes online they're in onto the point the first thing they're gonna be there pushing forward Munchkin builds up another grab slams it down immediately Chara gets eliminated so Jay Hong comes up the kill they're on the happy Rio gonna be dropped Fisher the only casualty so far for Soul Dynasty but they just now start getting the takes the first one coming through second one gonna be there with five and a half minutes remaining Looking for the kill on to Nero the rally is pop he's armoring himself up trying to stay alive and now has a Transcendent to back him. Long show charge may just be able to stabilize and with a retreat here from Soul Dynasty, it seems like that is going to be the case. Well, this the ult efficiency for Jay Hong is incredible. The guy is winning them fights, building up ults insanely quickly. And now they've got an extra approach here as Rio overextends. Just get taken down, but can they make their way back into the point already? It seems like the answer is going to be yes, because now it's another kill coming through as Nero will be taken down. Rio just now respawning. High energy from Munchkin. Grab instantly in, locks up Happy. He disappears. He kills himself with a right click in all of the chaos. Hotba eliminated. Rio coming in. Shatter is going to be good, but That's there's no enough. one there to get the kills. They can't capitalize on the back of a massive ultimate. Rio getting knocked up into the air, nearly taken down. Fire strikes good. Rise going to be eliminated. Sound barriers out. Nero going to be taken down. The wrecking ball not doing enough. Swing it away. Happy. No HP. Fisher gets a two for one special on the swing. And they get the completion here on Hanamura. They made nothing but decisive moves on this attack. The attack on A to commit to Fisher's charge there. He looks for a pick. He finds Happy, which is 
arguably one of the best picks you can get because that means he's spending all of his time on the respawn timer. You get the first cap on A, he can't come back. He can't even really get in the right click range. He's not going to trade up. That means Munchkin's always going to have more grabs. And that is exactly what won them B there. Got them the first few ticks and then led to that further ult efficiency. We saw Munchkin with the last grab there at the last second to close it all out. And it's Jay Hong who's coming in here with these perfect delayed trances to counter all the damage from Guangzhou that converted into the energy there on the Zarya for Munchkin. So he does the massive damage, builds these grabs. It's crazy because we haven't really seen Jay Hong in this meta, right? Like at all? Yep. And we didn't really, I mean, we never really had this back when he was playing on Lunatic High in Korea. Overwatch League meta, very, very different from this. A lot of Widow, a lot of hits again. Hanzo, obviously, it was that short era. The Brigitte came in, slowly creeped up at the end. But when you look at Jae Hong, it, historically speaking, you always think about this player as an accurate Ana player, an accurate Zenyatta player. He's dangerous, he can kill you, he's going to hit you with a sleep dart, he's going to sh shut down the nano blade, et cetera, et cetera. But what we're seeing from Jae Hong tonight is not pure accuracy, it's not the headshots, it's not the sleep darts, it's good decision making, it's the timings, it's finding out the best way to maximize hit points, finding out the best way to get those heals, to get Munchkin into position, to max the energy out, and those timings, those can't be, those can't just be taught. It's experience, it's the background he has, and it's the shot calling that he's bringing in to say, I'm going to heal you, so you better go in and attack right now. I'm hitting the trance button. So it seems like we do have a slight pause as we work out some possibly tech issues. On Looks the like side Fisher, of the, maybe. Yeah. yeah, this whole Dynasty player. So we'll just go ahead, get all of that taken care of so we can jump back in here. This is when we find out that Soul Dynasty didn't even have mics working on that last push. They just like, did it <laughs> off. Uh, you yeah, know, all the communication went out. I mean, you can see right there a smile on Jay Hong's face, something that uh, we have not really seen in quite some time. You know, fan meetings aside, etc. But in a match setting, this is such a good look for him. The, ult time, the build time on that, you know, last transcendence or second last transcendence in that fight on that push there on B, so very rapid from him. So he so he actually, a lot of Zens will stay on the high ground uh, to the top right when yeah. they're on the attack, right, and, and look for kills and, and a good angle that way. <laughs> but he actually stayed on the low ground in the center. He actually dropped down and was able to find more damage that way. He did that because he knew Munchkin had them all corralled on the left side, and he had a better line of sight from the low ground to do maximum damage there. Do you know Ru Jeong? <laughs> Fan sign. But yeah, he, he, you know, when you're ahead like that and you have the full, whole fight, completely controlled like that. You can practically play from anywhere as the Zen, but uh, he took the low ground approach rather than the high ground, which is pretty rare. Uh, but it, it gave him that extra line to those members coming out of the spawn and kind of blindsided them. So season two will be different. Yeah, I think so. I think regardless roster changes or anything like that probably would be the case. Yeah. But uh, so far kicking things off pretty nicely. Lee Jung Tower, a bit of a blemish, but coming back through onto Hollywood. Uh, fantastic defense coming in. And then now on Hanamura, just looking so very oppressive. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously not over yet, but uh, the time bank advantage is pretty yeah. significant. We're talking about a... You know, 51 seconds, Yeah, the lock-in for the side of Guangzhou compared to you know, several minutes here, five minutes about, I think, remaining on that clock. And it does kind of sound like we're talking only about Seoul Dynasty at the moment in terms of uh, Hanamura. Um, but, oh, Nero fan Hey, here. look go. at that. Nice. But uh, Kwangso Charge, like, they didn't do any, they didn't make any overarching mistakes either in that defense. It was just that Seoul Dynasty got that, they took a risk, right? If Happy doesn't get hit by Fisher's Charge, we're looking at a completely different game, right? And we'll have to, we'll have to go back and rewind yeah. and re-commentate it. But when he commits there, they get the first cap. Happy is the first one to die. They have no defending grab. You just kind of have this snowball effect that Soul Dynasty orchestrated perfectly. They punished everything that Guangzhou could try to do with the extra ults they had. Jaehyung said in his interview earlier, the halftime interview about ult efficiency is kind of the name of the game for their squad right now. And you can really feel that. And when you get an advantage like that, it's even easier to maintain that ult advantage because you, you walk in with more ults. You, you deny ults by getting extra kills and... Um, that's why we talked about how we might see a lot of rounds on this map because we see a lot of double caps. But with the time bank, unfortunately okay. for charge, seems less likely. Yeah, a bit shy of that five minute mark there. So, bumped up to 441 a minute here for the side of the charge. They need to absolutely storm their way onto point A and try to force that cap. 
one pickoff really could unravel it all. Certainly true. As we saw there on the uh, on the defense for the charge earlier. So the defensive setup here just going to be the meta. Set up here, the 3-3. For Guangzhou, I wouldn't mind to see something like Nero coming on the Farah uh, and try to change things up. You know, we've seen very rare success with this Yaki comes to mind in contenders very recently. Yeah. The attack Farah. When you have a small time bank like this, though, it's very, very difficult to pull that off. Looks like we might see... Okay, no. No. <laughs> The Winston, the Winston Ryan attack is actually like stronger than you might think, but Zarya is going to be the better option here. Yeah, not going to happen. Well, we'll just be pushing forward. 50 seconds on the clock as they reach the gate. Chara, riding high, looking for some shots. Just trying to track the positioning of everybody on the side of the Soul Dynasty so they can orchestrate their approach here, he's but they don't have that much time. He's trying they to have knock to come in soon. Yeah, he's trying to knock them off the high ground, but Michelle has just got his number, man. He's been watching him. That's gonna be the push forward here from the side of the charge. Fisher taken down, a fantastic start for them. Rise coming up with that kill. Rio getting tagged up quite a bit. They need to keep him alive. They're unable to do so, but the kills are still gonna be their three members gone for the side of Soul Dynasty on this initial defense. The attack, absolutely fantastic from Guangzhou, and that might just be the finish here. It looks like it will be on point A as they clean up Jay Hong. 30 seconds bonus gonna be added to the clock. Very much ideal for Guangzhou. I mean, it cannot get better than this. They have the fastest members to rejoin with the Shield Bash, the you know thrusters, and then the speed boost here from Chara to get back to B. So they keep the fastest three there. The rest of the members looking for that extra charge, including Happy, who's holding 96 at the moment. Work their way in onto the point. Can they get the double cap? Grab going to be coming down. No chance of denying that one away here for Michelle. And instantly, three members fall flat on the floor. Michelle popped out, joins them. Jay Hong trying to get that trance up. Dies right as it becomes available. And this might just be the snowball double cap here. Guangzhou Charge will be able to get it. Two points locked down in OT here on Hanamura. I mean, we've, we've been talking about it all contender season long for Korea. We talked about it a lot leading into this map and, and what it might mean. But the double caps do happen a lot. And this is based off the fact, this one in particular is based on the fact that Seoul tried to recontest. They tried to buy that time on A. They lost a lot of ult charge because of it. They gave over, I should say, a lot of ult charge to Happy in particular. He comes in with the grab. Michelle misses the defense matrix. If you go back and watch that fight, you can see he pulls it out just a second too late. Just a late reaction there, unfortunately, an uncharacteristic mistake of uh, you know, one of China's, you know, China contenders best diva players there uh, in Michelle. He's, he's Korean, but he played for um, Lucky Future Zenith yep. and the champions there for season two of Chinese contenders. One of the better divas there in that region. Makes a small mistake, a little bit late on the reaction there. Didn't expect Happy to toss out the quicker. Perhaps just didn't realize he had it that fast. Uh, because ult, ult efficiency and ult advantages have been in Soul's favor since Hollywood. So you're not really thinking about, wow, they're slamming us hard with the second push, coming in with that grab. And part of that's because Jae Hong stuck around and actually dueled there, and that gave over a lot of extra charge. But anyway, a small mistake for Michelle leads to a huge grab. Everybody gets caught. It's a double cap. This is not the one map by any means for charge, but that was better than they could have ever hoped for with one minute of time. Man. Oh, yeah. Well, here we go on the attack, Soul Dynasty. Pushing their way forward. Can they get another huge pin on the start? They'll work their way over. For now, it seems like yet again, gonna be playing this one patiently at the beginning. Bubble gonna be coming down, Fisher this time, not gonna be coming up with a pin. He's trying to stay alive, taking a lot of damage and will be eliminated, rise again. Having his number comes up with a kill onto the enemy right now. Munchkin gonna be going down. They got hot, but nearly knocked out of the mech, but it's not good enough. And even with that happening, is still just so many members so, gone. So now Achilles, we get to live in the alternate reality of what happened last time, right? For Fisher went for the aggressive play. They had the time bank advantage. Same case yep. here. This time though, Fisher misses the charge. He doesn't get the kill. He's the first to die. And now Guangzhou gets ult advantage. So time's ticking down here. Soul Dynasty is still with the advantage. You still think there's a high chance they can get the double cap here with the time they have. But this is what could have occurred had he not gotten that opening kill on Happy on the previous attack. So Soul Dynasty looking, you know, to play a little bit more passively, you'd think, on this attack with Fisher. Not hoping for that easy grab on a single kill. Pushing forward again. Going to be the rally out here from Nero. 
They play right up into the choke, uh, allowing anybody from Soul Dynasty to even poke their head around the corner of this gate. Rally to answer from Fleta. Rio, Shatter online. Looking for an opportunity. Transcendence already used by Jay Hong. Shatter gonna be coming down. Locks up two into the back. Transcendence lasting a little bit longer, but now the grab is gonna be in. It instantly as Toby gets dropped. Fisher gone. The bomb from Hotba gets rid of Jay Hong. And that is gonna be another one fight here. Jay Hong just a little bit too itchy with that trigger finger. Pops the Transcendence. Doesn't have it for the extended fight with the grab. Yeah. And then they end up losing. Looks like we got a pause here, but. You're certainly right about that. A little bit mistimed, and they wanted the uh, they wanted the trance to link in with the rally, so they could all keep the armor. So, in theory, like you shut down the grav, you get full heals, and when you walk out of the grav, everyone's got the armor, right? Yeah. So that that's the whole idea. Unfortunately, it ends up like worst case scenario. Rally's wasted. Flutter builds sixty percent somehow. The devil. <laughs> he builds sixty percent of another <laughs> one afterwards. So that's at least good for Soul. But you lose the trance, you lose the rally, you lose the fight. Grav ends up being perfectly efficient for Guangzhou here. Looks like Fisher uh, had a bit of a mistake, uh, not a mistake, rather a technical issue. Um, uh, we did see Munchkin, I believe, say PP in the chat there, just for a second. <laughs> Which, by the way, is always has been in Korean esports, the universal um, you know, request to pause to the admins, is to type PP in chat for please pause. Yeah. It's not, I have to go to the restroom. Yep. <laughs> please pause. Yeah, please don't misunderstand. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, back in the old days uh, in Brood War, um, it was a rule that you had to type PP. And some players, and, and if you did not, because chatting was illegal uh, in Brood War, after Boxer used chatting to trick his opponents um, and, and get them distracted, well, then you'd run up your ramp. Um, after chatting was banned in professional brood war play, typing things like PPP by accident could cause you to either get a warning or in some extreme cases, lose the match entirely. So there's a lot of jokes about that for those who've been following Korean esports for a long time. We don't have such rules in this show match, but no. still the old habit is to type PP in the chat to ask for a pause. No matter where you're, where you're from, what, uh, <laughs> what esport you're casting. Oh dear, well hopefully not, uh, not gonna be any Severe issues here for the side of the dynasty. We did have that slight little delay getting ready to go into the second half of Hanamura. Been good up until this point, so hopefully we can go ahead and take care of uh, whatever is ailing the side of the, you know, the home favorites here. Yeah, I'm hoping that it's something like a, this monitor's got a messed up refresh rate or, you know, maybe he's, maybe he's having a little bit of lag, something that's easy to fix. It seems like headset may be coming back on momentarily, so we should be good to we'll jump back in here. Yeah, it seems like we had the admins come over. He seems to be agreeing with whatever the decision is made here with. But yeah, it's a rough look for Seoul Dynasty after that failed attack, because yep. that's going to buy a lot of time for Guangzhou, just kind of jumping back into the story of this game. They got the ult advantages now. Fisher's aggressive play didn't pay off this time, and now he's playing more passively. But, you know, that... A bit of a the first big flub, honestly, for Jae Hong in this entire series and these entire three maps, like, uh, is going to cost them. Yeah, and I, I mean a really good look uh, right now for the side of Charge, especially in that support line. Rise, just coming up with kill after kill on the Fisher. Here we go. We'll be back in, but already 2:45 going to be drained away. Two minutes gone off the starting clock for Soul Dynasty. A couple ultimates going to be ready to go. Shatter bomb. They will have that bigger bang combo with a sound barrier to try to keep themselves safe. This has to be a really big push for Soul. They need to see the Shatter to work out. If this gets shut down and they commit their ults, they're in trouble. Pushing forward, Shatter gonna be looking pretty darn good so far. Sound barrier out from Char, but a bit too late to try to keep Nero alive. Graptown surges in for Munchkin as well, swinging away. Fisher comes up the break, go to Hot Buzz Mech. This will be the cleanup time here. Rice taken down, Chara the last one remaining, gets tagged up, Toby will be able to finish him off. The cap is gonna be there, and they do it fairly efficiently. Yeah. Fisher's nearly got another shatter ready to go. And this is the thing, Fisher, if he doesn't hit that shatter, it's really tough for them to take the point, but he comes up with a big one, and he's able to do it off the back of that speed boost coming through from Toby. He gets a nice angle there, and suddenly they've turned this really on its head, because that's the tool Soul Dynasty had. Much easier said than done to just speed boost in and hit a massive shatter, but he does it, he gets the team wipe, and this is when, you know, he does it while also having technical issues, apparently. <laughs> but he does it knowing that Ryze doesn't have a trance. That's the one thing they got out of that last fight. He comes in, he's yeah. got the shatter. And apparently still perhaps a small issue with the Yeah, monitor. nailed it. Oh, man, nailed it down, though. And it, I almost 
got caught up a little bit. I almost panicked talking about the shatter because I looked at his ult charge and I was like, wait, no, maybe he did. I, I could have sworn he shattered in the last no, he fight. Did. Like, oh, no, he did. He, did. he just built up 76% again that rapidly. So has it set, set and ready to go. So pretty much the only thing that they're lacking right now on this attack is going to be that Graviton Surge. Yeah. So we'll and see how they, they can time. orchestrate this. But otherwise, five ultimates pretty much online. They have time to build it. They do need to be careful about how they commit on the high ground. You know, the there's obviously the high ground pl platform that is... I guess parallel to the back wall, and then you have the one that's perpendicular, the, the one that leads down to the staircase, right? The right wall, and then the flat wall, the straight wall. I don't know what, how else to describe this. You guys know what I'm talking about. The middle high ground and the top right high ground. Yeah. Soul Dynasty flirted a lot with committing off of the high ground to the middle ground and jumping in there and gave a lot of ult charge to Guangzhou when they were messing around there on the defense. Eventually it did work out for them, and they burned down a lot of that time bank down to 51 seconds, but it was a little bit shaky there. So let's see how they decide to play it this time, obviously this time on the attack. Will they just try to go down the center? It's it's tough to say because the time bank they got from the last one was off of a double cap, right? And the insane quick take and the fast grab we saw from Munchkin. They're not going to have these tools this time, so we're going to get a better idea of how they like to approach the map on attack. And sometimes you can relate that to the defense, you know, how they like to fight on the center balcony there and collapse onto that. We might see them commit up the staircase on the right side and just try to knock them off the top, commit into those fights, even maybe chase them down the stairs based on what we saw in the defense. But we'll, we'll learn a lot here since the last time it was kind of a free cap. Yeah. Seems like That's all I can still, say about this, you know. Yeah, it seems this, like uh, we're still trying to <laughs> suss out uh, <laughs> what, the, what the issue is and what fix is necessary to get things moving. Headset is back on for Fisher, so it seems like maybe he's just experimenting a little bit to make sure that everything is okay. Given that we're asking him to test things after putting his headset on, you'd have to imagine that it might be a sound issue. I'm not sure. I'm really just grasping at straws here. Could I always do this when we have a technical problem. Like, maybe it's uh, his <laughs> shoe's a little bit too tight. I mean, I can't really tell you guys, but like, it could be he moved his foot a little bit weird a second ago. I'm not sure. Who knows? <laughs> it could be all matter of things. But hey, let's just go ahead and get Epic High out here to play another. <laughs> Another uh, couple songs while we wait. That was really cool to see them. They were one of my first uh, Korean bands I really liked uh, when I was, you know, in high school. Um, one was the song they played, the second song they played. One of their most popular songs. One of my favorite songs for them. Definitely recommend checking out the music video for that. It is pretty cool. Okay, here we go. Countdown timer. Now that Wolf story time is over. It's over. And we can uh, come back up. in. So two minutes, six seconds, ready to go. Rally's going to be out from Fleta, looking to open things up with a bomb. And Michelle finds Rise. They take him down. Chara going to be eliminated. Jay Hong gets rid of that second support. Good angle for Fisher here. Slams it down straight into the doorway. Locks up Hot by the mech. Going to be a pop. Rio answers back with the shatter of his own, but the kills are not there again for Guangzhou on the back of the alt. Nero now going to be taken down happy. Trying to make his way back over here to the point, getting tagged up, going lower and lower. Transcendence going to be out from Rise. The double, the triple cap rather nearly there. They managed to tag in the Zenyatta, however, not going to be standing a chance by himself. He'll get popped. Rio over onto the Wrecking Ball, going to be trying to buy a little bit more time. Chara immediately getting dropped. Happy swapping over onto the Winston. Doomfist out for Nero, just trying to buy a little bit more time, trying to drain this down to OT to force out the draw. Grab comes out, however, and they will be able to get the finish here with a minute and 16 seconds left on the clock. Man, what a what an aggressive attack. I mean, we talked about, you know, I was leading into the idea of do they commit to the high ground? Do they try to collapse and take the fight there and even chase potentially down the stairs if Guangzhou kites back that way? They went all in. They tossed the bomb in. They find Rise. Full aggression Huge out of this pick. team. Huge pick there. The Perhaps the most important pick they could have gotten. Fisher gatekeeps not only the right side spawn where Hoppa is trying to escape, but also the left side there where the spawn is, that back wall platform. Because he's got a line where he can shatter the entire platform if the barriers drop for just a second. So he's blocking and covering two angles in that way. Now, mind you, the second the fight starts going that way on the point itself and they're starting to get those kills, you can see we're watching Michelle, who makes the big play to get the, the pick on to rise. He goes like a magnet to prevent the remake there uh, of Hoppa. Insanely quick reaction time there. Good shot calling. And I'm going to be honest, I feel like this level of coordination we're seeing from Soul Dynasty tonight, 
we did not see very often in Overwatch League Season 1, but they are all on the same page. They're reacting quickly. They're keeping their ult efficiency up. And this is even with two, you know, you know well, more than two new members on this squad, but in this particular lineup, you've got uh, Michelle in there, and, you know, it's working out very well with him on this D.Va. He's able to make that aggressive call. Jaehong is coming in with good trances, minus the one mistake there, which didn't end up amounting to too much there on the A yeah. uh, attack. So now one final push to be coming through. Not much time in the bank, a minute and 16. But hey, Charge did it with, you know, a minute on the clock. Should be all right. Try to get that cap. Well, you know what's interesting about this, too, is if this becomes a draw, then we do have the series decided by that final map of Escort. Uh, that's true. That would be it. One of these squads taking it with a 2-1 record. So let's see. Charge. Onus is on them to have a very strong defense. They have really done a good job of holding off Dynasty, at least on A, and denying them from, you know, really getting through there quickly. You know, the first time out wasn't great. They, you know, they had that massive time bank. They were able to bleed it down a little bit further. This next volley coming through, they had a very good defense to kind of slow up Zol. Yeah, they have a they have a choice to make here, right? Remember last the last time they got the very fast cap, it was off of Fisher's aggressive charge, right? Kills happy. Second time, doesn't get the kill he's looking for. He dies first, takes a little bit longer. They don't have a little bit longer here. They have 116. So do they put this on the back of Fisher on the Rhine and look for an insta kill to win the map? And then if they lose it, worst case, they tie. I mean, you've got that on, you know, at least in your in your wheelhouse. Or they get to do something completely crazy and different here. I don't think so, but, uh, you know. They're getting ready to move forward. They're at least scouting out. Fleta Farah. Okay, Fisher is going forward. We're going to get Fleta on the Farah, a classic from his Flash Lux days. Toby's Mercy, you know, heavily criticized, but he's got an opportunity to shine right now. Pushing his way forward. Fisher going to be swinging around from the right. Looking to disrupt this defensive ball from the side of Guangzhou. Fisher makes his way in. Adaptive shield absolutely massive for him. But it gets pushed back for the moment. Popping up in around the top. Pile driver going to be huge. Chara, the first one taken down. Munchkin finding the shot there with the Hanzo. In the corner is Rise. Stuck has a little bit of armor, but Fisher gets the knockoff. Goodbye, good night. Butchin comes up with another one. The Storm Arrows are there. The team is in shambles. And Soul Dynasty will be able to close out Hanamura. They will take the lead 2-1. A very close series when you started off on their first rounds with a 51 second time bank for Guangzhou Charge versus Seoul. Walking in at over four, it looked like for sure this is Seoul's map to take, but they turned it around, brought us to a closer map here. It was one minute, just over one minute, I should say, what, 113, I believe it was in the end, for Seoul to finish the map, and they do it. They do it off the back of a pretty wonky push. Toby brings out the Mercy again, as I mentioned. Heavily criticized for his mercy play in the past, but in a short map like this with a tricky composition, you can really get in there and mess with your opponent's heads. You can find that tiny window, and that is precisely what they did. Fisher, the big wrecking ball plays. It's it's really nuts to see how easily Fisher and Michelle slot into this team and how it they fit like a glove. I mean, it is actually insane to see. The synergy is not affected. You would expect that. You know, we might see a few minor mistakes here and there, with these two members of the squad coming in, Jexay as well, on the previous uh, map, the, the map of Lijong. But no. In fact, it seems like Soul Dynasty's got better coordination than ever. The question is, do they fit like a glove wolf? Not until fit comes in. Fitz comes Will in. Will we get to see him? Maybe, I don't know. We'll find out shortly. One more map to be played. Route 66 gonna be coming up. Guangzhou can still tie this. They could make it a 2-2 finish. They have some great moments. I mean, Rio has been putting up one hell of a performance. The support line is well behind him. Absolutely fantastic at times. Chara, uh, sometimes his bloodthirstiness does overstep a little bit, and he just lost himself. But overall, it has been very good play from him. But Soul Dynasty, they're inching their way out ahead. They're getting those victories through Route 66. Have we seen anything from either of these teams that alludes to the possibility of a quad DPS play. Not really. Well, we'll see who's playing, right? Because if you got That's Happy, true. That's if true. you got Happy in and Eileen in, I'm thinking we're starting to we're starting to get a little warmer, right? We're starting to feel like maybe this could happen. Um, Kib as well, you know, someone that we could see come in and that sure. could fit into the quad DPS. 
Uh, Sombra, also a possibility on this map. We've seen a lot of Sombra, you know, outside of Korea on Route 66 and on Korea itself. Something I'd love to see. Love to see Toby, sound barriers, some EMPs, you know, some old school stuff like we saw back in the Lunatic High days. It's, it's tough to say exactly what we're going to see because it's a new meta. But also going back to kind of what we were talking about on Hollywood, Ash also very viable on this map, especially that is on very A. True. Long range, you've got dynamite angles. Bob can get in there and contest the point, contest some of these chokes. Very difficult to to hit him at range when he's fighting, in, for example, on the edge of a mine shaft where you can't really see him until you're exposing yourself to his damage output and the AOE stuff that's going to happen there with the dynamite. There's a lot of synergy there. So if that could comes see through, it, I mean that would be the first time that we're seeing owl caliber players using it in a competitive setting. So. Would be very interesting to see how they want to use the Ash, how they want to utilize her, what the comp around her would be. I'm hoping, you know, fingers crossed, that either, either of these squads decides to bring that one out would be an absolute treat. I think everybody is already kind of like, oh no, 3-3, three, three, it's the Owl teams if they play 3-3-2. Three, three, oh, I'm sure the they're saying, yeah, Goats is dead, you know, all this kind of stuff after we saw the Farah Hanzo attack coming through. <laughs> oh, Fisher gave us a look. <laughs> So I'm tired of these pauses. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm tired of these pauses as well, you know. This is my anti-pause face. <laughs> well, hopefully that, that is enough to scare the pauses away. Yeah. I think, I think it would be. One can hope. <laughs> you, not, you and I very much don't like pauses. The audience doesn't like pauses. They want to go straight into the action. I'm no. sure they were... You know, they, they're probably like, oh, wow, well, this musical performance is pretty good. But there was still probably some part of them on the inside. They're like, but I really want to see the so game start. So when I had a Walkman and, and then later a CD player back when I was when I was younger. Most I of our the, viewers probably don't know what a Walkman is. I know. Well, they're going to have to Google it. But I had my pause button removed because I hate pauses that much. Okay. Usually the play button also serves I can't tell if you're being button. serious no, or not. I, you no, know, it's, probably not. I think that, uh, that might be a little bit above... Your, uh, your knowledge at that age <laughs> to remove a pause button and still have a working Walkman. But here we go, some changes on the side of Guangzhou. Shu will be back in, Rai's gonna be stepping out. Yep, so the uh, former Flash Lux Toronto eSports player coming in here. He's got a very good Widow as well, by the way. Something that doesn't always come up. We do sometimes see the sub healers flex to the uh, Widowmaker, and that could be relevant for Quad DPS, just to mention it. Kib will be coming in as well. Okay. For the final map. So Nero going to be stepping out. Just going to be Kib coming through for him. Kib. We will finally get to see him. Kib is one of those players that you, everyone's so hyped to see in Overwatch League because he's been playing since the beginning of competitive Overwatch. Like He started on Reunited, for those who remember that team way back in the day. Yeah. So since 2016, he's been playing. You see, he's been on Laser Kittens. He's been on Cloud9 for Europe, British Hurricane, where he ended up at the very end of things. Uh, before moving into Overwatch League, but the guy has been around. He hasn't really won a big competitive title internationally or anything like that. He hasn't been able to play at this caliber yet. To oh. say, I'm one of the best. And this is going to be fits in. But yep. I'm just saying, like, we got to mention, this guy finally gets to prove himself as a top-tier player to the world. And I think that's going to happen over the course of regular season. But for this show match tonight, at least he gets to field it in the final map. He gets to show his stuff. Yeah have that pressure playing in front of a, a you know a big audience especially one that is you know I, the home crowd of your opponent so dealing yeah. with that pressure is going to be so very valuable to all of these players who are making it over onto the big stage of overwatch league here for season two but Fitz will be coming through i'm sure a lot of you guys might not know much about him he was on a team going water s during korean trials was a doomfist player mostly did kind of go for that up in your face, bruiser melee style. Yep, he and also often would be that, subbed out for you know a sombra player. Yeah, before that played for GC Busan's uh, you know wave sister team Lucia. Yeah. very briefly. So he's mostly played online tournaments, right? This is his first big offline event. So yeah. exciting to see how he's going to perform on land. There's a lot of extra pressure that comes with that. And what he's going to be playing, whether or not he's just going to be taking over the Zarya duties here for Munchkin, or if it's going to be something else, because Route 66 kind of has been the breeding ground for interesting performances. We've seen the Orisa May cheese strat hiding inside of the, the little tunnel there. We've seen the quad DPS brought first by Stormquake. Let's see what we get as we go ahead and get ready to jump into the final map here. Route 66 to decide it all.
Fleta already playing with my heart by showing the Ash. You know, we'd all love to see it. Really That's a well. very precarious container up there, by the way. Yeah. Should probably just snip that off uh, for safety reasons. It's Ash's fault. Fire. She's the one who did that. Yeah. They're pushing forward. There's only 30 seconds. Okay, well. Come on. No, I'm not gonna go all the way. Oh, 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 is he gonna do oh. it? Is he gonna do it? Oh, I think he might do it. Is he doing? I think he might do it. I think he's gonna do it. You and I jinx this all the time, but okay, it looks real. So when you talk about Fitz, he's known known for dive play, projectile play, not the widow per se. Do you have double hit scan with this roster? Oh you, man, it's triple DPS. But what you miss out on though is the sustainability. It's mercy with I'm the standing up. So there's no AOE healing in this at all. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Guangzhou still trying to finalize their composition, but the shots start flying. Fleta already going to be tagging up Kim quite a bit. Nearly takes down that Farah. Reloading here onto the high ground. Rio making his way forward towards the cart. Barrier's going to be coming down. Fits around the back. They should have first when he gets popped, though. Happy takes him down. Now follows up for another one. Let's watch this man. Trying to snipe Fitz out of the air, gets a tag onto that Widowmaker, gets flat out, takes him down, Happy is on fire! And you know Rio's doing almost nothing here, as we will see this traded back, but he's actually on the Orisa, so that's gonna give them a lot of extra stability and a really nice res target, but he's not able to do anything to Fitz or Fleta, it's actually really just Happy who's coming in here and crushing, Kib controls this choke now, and Guangzhou Charge gets a nice wraparound for free, they're the ones who bring out the quad DPS, I mentioned earlier when Shu was subbed in, this is the map, you wanna put your, your support player on that widow can flex back to the support so it all works out here given Shu's history very nicely done for Guangzhou charge and Soul Dynasty is just gonna swap it back they're not they're not putting up with these shenanigans they will be changing it up Fisher's still gonna be here on the wrecking ball however otherwise it's gonna be that 3-3 gets the hit there on the happy knocks him off top of big girls but he can just climb his way back up they get the kill Jay Hong's taken down by Kim Guangzhou looking fantastic 0.17 meters away as happy takes down Toby and that will be the completion here on a 505, one of the biggest time banks that I have ever seen in Korean Overwatch. Yeah, I mean, here, the, for Route 66 on point A. Hashtag your asterisk, almost completely Korean Overwatch. Yes, that's true. Uh, Kib's playing with the best up here, though. Okay, Overwatch played in Korea, including Apex, because there was foreign teams. There we go. All right, so We're good. <laughs> Guangzhou Charge, they've clearly practiced this, is well prepared. We're seeing Happy line these shots up with the halts from Rio. Not every time, but to a certain extent, you can use those together. So he's got this choke controlled with the Dragon Strike, but might as well hold it here. It's not everyone's together. Oh, I like oh, this better. Throwing it straight into the motel here. Looking to lock him down. A double kill. The barrage up from Kim as well. Manages to find a kill on the Fleta. And honestly, Soul Dynasty, I think they might have to do something a little bit different if they want to stop this composition. Yeah, they're really having some trouble here. Fits back on the Widow to try to knock Kib out of the sky. But this execution here with the combo with Dragon Strike and the Barrage is something we've seen from Stormquake. It's something that we've seen in Korea from O2 team as well. Yep. Very popular to try to drive those heroes out of the chokes into the Barrage with the uh, Storm Arrow, or, or the um, Dragon Strike, excuse me. Yep. It's kind of a... Catch 22, you lose lose on that one. If you're okay. running into it. Uh, but, ooh. Finds Fitz. Fitz doesn't know which way to look. Grapples up to the top. Trying to stay alive. In the meantime, Happy finds a kill on the Toby off screen. Hoppa will be able to finish off the Widowmaker in the end. Now trying to jump on the Rio J Hong, who is just under pressure from both of these DPSs. One from the low ground, one from the high ground with the storm arrows. Happy comes up with a kill. I and think the problem, I, this is just record breaking time. I think the problem for Soul Dynasty is they've committed to neither sustainability, all hardcore like 3 3, yeah. which they're swapping to now, or hit scan a matching DPS. So since they did, they kind of took a half measure on the defense, Guangzhou was winning out because theirs was the hardcore DPS and they were burning down targets. Now Soul swaps, but Guangzhou matches them at ult charge because of it outside of the rally. I mean, we are basically reset here with an insane time bank for Guangzhou charge. Yeah, I mean, they have more than enough time to build up these ultimates. So I mean, Shu gonna have to try to put in a little bit of extra work to get that transcendence up. Pin gonna be coming down. Fisher looking for the kill, unable to find it though. Fire strike through. Tags him up on Pit. Jae Hong again gonna be using that transcendence off the start of the fight. Rio going in a bit deep over to the side, back towards his own spawn. Will be safe to get top back up. Soul Dynasty can go ahead and stabilize around this initial corner. Yeah. Very much Hoppa going back to familiarity here on the Diva after a great performance on the Tracer. So we see Fisher just waiting for that old charge here. He's coming through, trying to build this one up. Sound barriers out from Toby. He commits. At the start of the fight. 
Shatter online, waiting for an opportunity. Gets stunned up. Fisher absolutely melted down as Kim comes up with a kill. Toby is well going to be dropped. Jay Hong trying to kite his way back. Seems like he'll be able to do so. Moves his way back over towards the push? spawn, but the cart, yeah, it's going to start advancing here Fisher, for free. You could see how he wanted to play that. He wanted to use the barrier to get the last part of that ult charge and speed boost in, but he was shut down by the shield bash. You know, we're on that patch. Obviously, he doesn't go through the shields, but he gets flanked there. And Kim makes the big play for Guangzhou, shutting him down. Now he still holds the shatter. Let's see if he can make it work this time. Yep, Rio has one of his own. Let's see who can land the larger one here. Graviton search to open things up. Fitz locks him in. Bomb out. Not going to find anything. Responding bomb from Hot Bun. Looking for the pick. The shatter comes down. Jay Hong going to be gone. Fisher dead just beforehand. Now Michelle popped out of the mech. The kills coming through. Spilling forth for Guangzhou Charge as they look to finish this map. 3.02 left on the clock. They clean up Toby. A couple meters left to go. They push him back. Excellently done there by Hotba right at the finish. And they will go ahead and complete Route 66, steamroll their way through Seoul Dynasty. Before anyone from who, who hasn't been following contenders around the world, especially contenders Korea, gets too excited about Quad DPS being the new counter to 3-3, <laughs> let's remember several things about this attack. First of all, the Kibbs unchallenged Farah was able to control the chokes. We saw, uh, you know, Shu come out on the Widow which is, again, specifically good for certain Zenyatta players who can play the Widow. Violet, for example, one of those players in Overwatch League next season who is a Zen main who is very good at Widow. So they have that extra flexibility there. You end up with a comp that's built for this. The only thing that's really missing is Rio's, uh, you know, Orisa, which didn't make that much of an impact until he was able to get those halts there for Happy. And they get insta-blow-up kills. Soul Dynasty is late to respond, and they only respond halfway. So this ends up being kind of a free push and it's map exclusive to Route 66. You won't see this on, say, Junkertown necessarily. Maybe on A, but outside of that, it's not going to happen. But in you know current map pools, especially the, the Contenders map pool, this is the map you're going to see us on. You're not going to see it on Dorado. You need an open space to make it work. You need that blow-up potential because you will get out-healed in any other situation where the enemy team on tanks can catch up. And Fleta was experimenting with the Ash, which didn't end up working well against more direct damage that's coming out from a Hanzo or a Widow. So when you add all these things up, you know, it's very well done by Guangzhou, very well prepared. But it's not the end-all, be-all. This is not the straight counter for those who are watching this the first time. Well, Happy and Kip going to be on the Widow and the Ash, respectively, here on the defense. Fisher looking to move forward with this Wrecking Ball, getting knocked down below half HP. Consistently getting tagged up. Fitz looking for a shot. So far, unable to find it. Fleta, in the meantime, taking some damage. I believe Dynamite going to be burning away at him. Jaehong on the Sombra, by the way. Okay. And that is something we used to see back in the old days. Started by Twilight. Intriguing here, but Kim finds the first kill. As Fisher goes down, the rest is available. Toby brings him back into the mix. Michelle able to find Kim. Gets rid of that Ash. Rez going to be coming through. Looking for the hack there. Chara will be hacked. Drops onto the ground. Orb of Harmony trying to keep him alive. And Jae Hong just can't quite get the angle enough to take him out. Yeah, Sombra just doesn't have the, the range at distance there to pick him off. So nice escape from Chara. Jae Hong only building 40% because he was looking for the kill, not for ult charge here. So EMP is still far away. Two different ways of playing Sombra. One is to farm the charge. The other is to look for kills. He looked for the kill. He fails. And, you know, that means that Soul Dynasty is still a ways away from that EMP, which is going to be what they need to initiate a fight. Yep, Rez going to be used here on the fence, puts him back into the mix. Dynamite's going to be good. Kip building up nicely towards the Bob. Yep. Meanwhile... Oh, God, I can't wait to welcome Bob into the game. Oh, it's about to happen, man, it looks like. Meanwhile, Fleta swaps over to the Genji. Oh, Fitz going to take that headshot! Sprays away with the left click, can't quite finish him off. Kip's going to be going lower and lower. Fleta able to come up with a kill now. He swapped over onto the Genji. Fitz finds Chara. Shu going to be eliminated. No supports. Now no happy. Rhea and Hotba both going to be taken down. And that will be the defense broken. Soul Dynasty can continue to charge forward, and the Bob dream is dead. Yeah, you can see that this composition can fall apart like a house of cards once something like a Genji that's mobile and has that uh, backline, you know, a dive with it, something like a Sombra to, to help pair with that. It's very, very easy to, to start getting those kills and, and kind of allow everything to, or rather, you know, break in and, and make everything fall apart. So Gu Guangzhou now swapping up completely back to 3-3. But there's an EMP ready. Yep, EMP is... Ready and raring to go here from Jae Hong. Goes invisible. Translocator gonna be down. Waiting for an opportunity. Gets stunned up, and oh, Shu comes up with the kill. Nicely done there, Kim. 
Able to get the shield bash now. Fleta gonna be gone. It's a complete turnaround here. One of many... Guangzhou stabilizing. One of many good shield bashes from Kiv in pivotal moments to shut down that EMP. Jaehong was on top of both supports there and could have shut down the trance, but he gets the stun. Very well done. Didn't lose the EMP. They did nope. not interrupt it, but they kill him off. They buy some more time away from Dynasty's time bank. Yeah. Jaehong gonna be lucky to find that position again. Pulse bombs in, shoot, doesn't commit the transcendence, now gonna get picked off, Chara dead as Michelle comes up with a double kill, happy, able to finally get rid of that tracer, but the blade has been pulled for Fleta, looking for a target. It's gonna be swiping away at Hot Buzz, Mac will be able to pop him up and finish him, pop him out and finish him off. Less than a minute now remaining here, Dynasty just gonna be cruising forward, it's they time to swap. Up to 325. As soon as that spawner room's open, you've, as soon as that's open, you gotta go back to 3-3. Three, three. You can't make this work out in the open against Guangzhou, who's got the better ult charge. They're gonna have grab faster than you, you're gonna get locked in. Even Toby on the Valkyrie here is very risky to keep that in, because you're gonna be losing that sound barrier charge, and Valk is just not gonna be as effective here. They're gonna look for something of a fight here with this minefield, trying to use Fisher to engage. He's sneaking around the back, he's very noisy, but I don't think they've seen him. Pushing his way down, looking for the pile driver, gets a couple connections here. Gonna be zipping his way around the back, getting a lot of damage rolling through the tunnels here. Utter chaos, never. We haven't really seen a fight lead back to this point in quite some time. Jae Hong and Toby both gonna get picked off. Happy uses the, the Graviton Surge here. And Soul Dynasty, they have members running all the way back towards the diner to try to stay alive. Yeah, they're gonna have to go back to spawn here. You know, this was the risk they took. They committed the Valkyrie, they went for the minefield. It cost them a lot of time. They weren't pushing the cart. Rio actually gets to use his primal, and then probably if things go well, in fact, he might even just go swap now. He's gonna wait for one more push. But if he had been able to swap there, then Guangzhou would be massively, massively, massively ahead. Either way, they still burn through a lot of that time. Yep, Rio pushing forward here into the front lines. Fitz holding on to that Graviton Surge. Hotbuck gonna have to hound him. Try to deny that away. Straight down the clock, over a minute so far, pushing forward, grab straight in onto the cart, will be good, locking them up, but they need the kills. Shu, keeping them alive with that transcendence. Wangshou building up, getting closer to their own ultimates now. Sound barrier gonna be coming through, Michelle looking for a pick off with the bomb, not gonna be able to find anything, makes it back into the mech safely. In the meantime, Happy will get dropped with the grab in his pocket. And that's huge because that would have been, there's no trance, there's no sound barrier. If had he been able to drop that down, we would have seen a really nice fight potentially, but Dynasty's just gonna keep bleeding members out here and get this pushed around the corner. Nice position for them. They still don't have the, the answering trance, right, for when Happy has, is respawned, but they can control his approach through the choke point here. Even Jaehan getting a nice line of sight here on those members that are about to spill out from the right side. Look at Michelle too, he's got his boosters ready. He's gonna try to slide in and eat that grab. That's their best chance of getting this through. Right, working their way back over towards the cart. Rally's gonna be up from Plata now, matched by Kip. Dropping down, looking for the sun there, onto Fisher. Shatter's gonna be online. Here's what we need to watch. It's tagged up a bit, grab gonna be good from Happy. He'll get shattered though. Fisher lays it down, but the bomb is there. Hutpa manages to find Fitz. One gonna be gone. Can they find more is the question. Ult's on the way, Shu gets that transcendence online, pops it instantly, trying to keep top ball alive, but Michelle will be able to knock him out, and he does not have a self truck to no get back instantly. No energy for Happy here, he's basically doing no damage. Yep, very low on that. Rio pushing back forward, trying to get that next primal online. Fish, you're gonna crumble under the pressure. There's just too many members focusing him down, even with the low energy Zarya, where they all work together, they can get rid of that Rhine. Yet again, Soul Dynasty gonna be held at bay. 18 seconds remaining, one more chance to realistically tag in onto the point. And normally, that would be Toby, he's dead. Fisher has to swap over to the oh, Wrecking no. Ball. Yeah, this is gonna be rough. Fisher's gonna have to try to slide in with this. Michelle's gonna be the next to touch as soon as he respawns here. But this is really rough for Soul Dynasty. I don't he's even know if they can get back. They're trying to body block him. He's not gonna be able to do it, I don't think. Oh, he barely does! But it's just gonna be an explosion on a rival. Packs his way through, they can't get it in time, and Charge will be able to take it. 2-2 two -two in the end. 2-2 two -two is the final score. So a very close series between these two teams. You know, when you look at the strategical depth, I think we have to give it to Guangzhou Charge here, but in terms of solid old efficiency and good teamwork and good team synergy amongst old veterans, and I mean some of the oldest names in Overwatch and Soul Dynasty with some of the newest, I think we have to give them the edge in that regard, but Guangzhou came in with some cool strategies. They were able to capitalize on their ult advantages on control. But man, what a series we ended up watching here. I, 
I enjoyed the hell out of casting that, yeah. to be honest with you, Kilios. I It just seemed to me like Dynasty did not know how to respond to the composition that we saw from Charges.